Good evening. Oh. All right. Good evening, everybody, WSD families. As you can see, we have a lot of people here tonight, and that is so extremely exciting. We appreciate you being here. We are a little cozy, so we're going to ask you to bear with us. Students, you can sit on the ground if you'd like and get comfy. All right. Well, we're very excited. We're honoring quite a few students tonight and I am going to turn this over to Ms. T. Lambert, our governing board president, uh, to kind of open up with a welcome. Good evening everyone. This is definitely a happiness problem to be able to bring everybody together to celebrate our kids accomplishments. And also I know that we're also honoring our students involved in the artwork and that is really important. And Thankfully, we've done very well in the last election, which keeps our arts, and it is important. It's an important part of education. So just enjoy. I know it's crowded, but it's so good to see everybody, to see your faces, to be able to talk to the kids and honor all the work that they have put into. Glad you're here. All right, so before we get started, we do have a couple of other people I would like to introduce. Also, our, um, we have three other governing board members here with us. Vice President, Ms. Nikki Whaley. <laughs> Member, uh, Ms. Lindsay Peterson. <laughs> and Ms. Jenny abbott Biardi. And also from district level staff, we have Executive Director of Business Services, Mrs. Dan Mr. Daniel O'Brien. <laughs> Assistant Superintendent for Administrative Services, Dr. Lynn Bailey. And our Superintendent, Dr. Paul Stanton. And I guess I should introduce myself. I'm Mrs. Mora. I'm the Assistant uh, Superintendent for Academic Services. All right, so we are gonna get started. We are recognizing two groups of students tonight. Um, so first, we're going to recognize the students who got a perfect score on either the math or the reading ELA, um, ASAA, and that's our state assessment. So that means the students we're gonna call up here, uh, we have two schools here tonight, they got a perfect score. They answered every single question correct on that test. And for those students who are here tonight, you know how hard those tests are. So um, that is quite an accomplishment. We're extremely proud of them. Then we're going to honor all the artists in our, our midst here tonight. And we are extremely proud of all the artwork that you have had up here. So without further ado, let's get started. So uh, we have an eighth grader from Mountain Sky, this is last year grade, so that would mean they're in freshmen, and I don't know if they're here tonight, but Drew Bergford, are you with us tonight? All right, well, let's give him a round of applause. He got perfect score in math. And then seventh grader last year, eighth grade this year, Marlene Lopez Juarez. And here to present certificate is, I think, see Julia? Yep, there she is, and we have the principal with us tonight, so thank you for being here, too. <laughs> yep, stay here. I'm sorry, I should have, yeah, logistically, stay here, and then we're going to take a picture of everybody together, okay? And the parents will give you a chance to take a picture, too. All right, also, seventh grade last year, eighth grade this year, perfect score in math, John Ott. And perfect score in math. Seventh grade last year, eighth grade this year, Matthew Workman. <laughs> All right. Matthew is playing basketball tonight. All right. So we'll, we'll get that certificate to him. All right. So those are our Mountain Sky students. So let's give them a round of applause. All right, and thank you, Miss Julia Herman, principal. I think I just said her first name, Julia. So. 
missed the last name. So. All right, next we have a couple students from Akatillo, and Ms. Mandy Taylor is here, and former principal, Dr. Steve Morowski, who now works with us up here in the HR department, director of HR. So we're going to ask them to come on up. <laughs> All right, so we have a current, last year fourth grade student, current fifth grade student, Vicente Correa. Vicente, are you with us? <laughs> Former fourth grade student, current fifth grade student, Angel Garcia Gomez. Current sixth grade student, former fifth grade student, Alejandro Jimenez. <laughs> no, I take that back. Current fourth grade student. You look awfully short for a sixth grade. <laughs> You're a fourth grade student. Nice job, Alejandro. Now our fifth grade, sixth grade student, Josh Aneza. There's Josh. And then our last Acatillo student for tonight. Mario Rosas. <laughs> All right, so these are our Acatillo students. We're going to go ahead and have you squeeze together and we'll get a picture. All right, now, and actually, I don't know if Dr. Morawski and Ms. Taylor, you might want to stay up here because this next student is a Palo Verde student now, but was in Acatillo last year. So, Christian Zahn, are you with us? Christian, yes. And Palo Verde principal Jay Richardson, I don't know if he's here tonight. Mr. Richardson here? No, okay. That's it. All right, with that, that concludes our students for the recognition of the perfect scores on ASAA. We are now going to move into the art recognition. So I am going to turn this over to Ms. Sam Cheriker. She is our coordinator of our um, special areas for the district. So Ms. Cheriker. Well, hi, everybody. Thank you so much for smashing in here together. Um, I want to thank all of our artists who were able to join us tonight and all of the all of your fans that are here, too. This is very encouraging. We like to see this. I just wanted to say really quick that um, artists build and strategize, and they plan and they observe. They create things just to make something more beautiful. They notice what other people, sometimes other people don't notice. They communicate feelings. They show what is possible. They make magic with color. And they learn how to be patient with good ideas. It takes time. Artists make art with stuff that others throw away. Oh my gosh, it's so true. The art teachers, I look at things, I'm like, this is all garbage. They're like, don't touch that. That's magic. It's just magic. We're going to build amazing things. So artists do really cool things, and our students have these opportunities. And additionally, art teaches all these 21st century skills like being very observant and critically thinking about things, problem solving. Um, obviously, creative skills matter, and it helps us learn to persevere through creation of projects, which you're looking at some. It helps us to communicate, and we always encourage our kids to take risks. So it's a great place to be in the world of art. So here we go. Uh, you all know art's cool because you wouldn't be here otherwise. So here we go. We are going to honor a bunch of students right now. And I hope that you will be patient with me if I happen to mispronounce a name. I'm going to really try to do it correctly. But we do have some uh, principles and stuff here that can help me too. So remind me which ones are going first, the ones that are hanging? Oh, the ones that are down. They're in order? By school. OK, let me start on the correct page. Well, those are hanging right now. Sorry, this is the one glitch. Okay, 
We're going to go with, oh, they're the ones that, okay, we're going with the current art board stuff. Okay, current artwork that's hanging. Thank you for pulling your artwork down. Don't leave with it. <laughs> we have to put it back up. You'll get it back. Where's Miss Garcia? She knows. She helps me do this. When do they get it back? Another November 20, after Thanksgiving weekend. Yes. All right. Beginning of December. Here we go. So this is to honor our artists from Abraham Lincoln School. So would you please, if you are one of those people thinking of a pathway to get here, I know that Mr. Proctor, the art teacher, can't be here because he's at a basketball game. I don't know if he's coaching or doing scoreboard, but he's very popular and busy. So, and I don't know if a principal's here from there either. Okay, so here are our students. I'm gonna say your first names. Ella, come on down. Ella, there you are. And Ella, you're gonna stay up here. We're gonna get a picture at the end and we want a picture of your artwork more than the certificate. Um, Liam. Delgado? Liam, thank you for being ready. Uriah Flores? May not be here. Um, Veda? M? Okay. There, is this her? No, that's just somebody moving. Don't move. <laughs> we'll think it's you. <laughs> be very still. Ileana Molina? And Elena Perkins. Anybody else from Abraham? Okay, well, these are our two representatives. Oh, wait, here she comes. There she is. Get your certificate. Let's let's show our artwork. Okay. Is there another Abraham Lincoln person here whose name did not get called? Nicole. Oh, sorry. It's a different color. Nicole Pierce. You guys, I apologize. Nicole, I'm so sorry. Thank you for waiting. Shalina. Shalina Rivery, Lydia Salmon, and Maddox Smith, Luke Wagner, and Savannah Whitmore. Sorry, they were a different color. Oh, look at all of them. Okay, and more, 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 more. They don't have their art work. If you don't have your Okay, let's smile for the pictures. Take them a little while to get out of there. So oh, yeah. It'll take us forever. It's like a mob. Thank you. I was worried about it. Yeah. Great job, guys. Thank you. All right. So if you're a student from Acacia, you're going to be coming up here next. So why don't you just go ahead and start making your way up here, and I will start calling your names. So this is the Thayer. Am I saying that right? Which one? Zahir. Zahir. Yeah. And if we, oh, oh, our principal is here too from Acacia. Oh, we have both of them. Whoa, major representation. Come on down. Here, come on. Okay. Now you guys can help me with the names. Zathari, but she's not here, but we will say it right for the record. And then this Annalise. Annalise. Olivia. Jade. Come on down. Bruce Bruso. Jade. Buelna. Buelna. Winter Hanish. Mia Martinez. Nailali Martinez Armenta. And Natalie Reyes. Hi, come on over here. Oh, that's weird. Okay. And we also have Sofia Rodriguez. Yes, come on down. And we have Janessa Smith. You gotta get your certificate. Are there any other students from Acacia who knows they have artwork and they are not up here yet? Come on down. 
Okay. Nope, I think that's everybody. Hold up your picture. Good job, guys. Okay, if you are part of Arroyo, would you come on down? Miss the Arroyo group, if there are any of our principals, we know that Mr. Corrales is here, the awesome art teacher from Arroyo. Come on over here. You're important. All right, and here are our student names from Arroyo. Freya, Arrington, is that Luciano, Camacho? Elisabella Corona. Oh, hello, and the principal too. Whoa, hi. This is important stuff. Okay, um, Bowden, Natalie Esquivel. There she is. Come over there and catch you. And did you give her her artwork? Okay, and Kennedy Estrella. Oh, yes, congratulations. We don't want to, yes, ignore you. You're here. Uh, Briella Marquez. Here she comes. Congratulations. Thank you. Which one did I say? Ember Medina. Cupid Pedrosa. Yes. Good job. And Jackie Samosa. And Jaden Torres. All right. Get in there and get our pictures. Get in there. Family photos, freeze, freeze, freeze for the families. Family photos. Okay, thank you, families and artists. And now we're looking for Chaparral. So if you're a principal from Chaparral or you're our art teacher, I know I saw her come in. She's somewhere there. She comes. And if you're one of our students, get ready, make your way toward the front, and then we'll call your name so you can be recognized. And so we're going to start with Eric Beatty. Felicia Brown. <laughs> Sophie Cooper. <laughs> McKenna Garcia. <laughs> Dallas McGee. <laughs> Matthew Moore. Here he comes through the crowd, so famous. Come on down. Okay, McKenna made it too. Hi, McKenna. We have to get her artwork while you're doing, but you can still get your cer certificate, sweetie. Stay up here with us. All right, I got so excited. I think I said, did I say Matthew Moore? I did. Did I say Aaliyah Poe? Aaliyah Poe. Here she comes. Make room, make room. Here comes the artist. And then we have Sofia Sacedo Cordova. And I think that is everybody. Let's get a picture. So I'll start getting the iron one on deck. Okay. All right. Thank you to our, ooh, our chaparral students. While they're getting their picture, if Ironwood students and Principal Miss Stacy Soli, if you're here, they'll come on up. Congratulations. Congratulations, Congratulations guys. Chaparral. Good job, everyone. Thank you. Thank you for being here, you guys. Okay. Okay, so if you're an Ironwood student, if you can come to the center aisle and just be ready. All and then we'll right. start calling your names. We have our art teacher, Ms. Markowski, here from our new art teacher at Ironwood. And we are going to begin with 
Emily Botello. So Randy Burgess. Oh, look at you guys. Kai Campbell Stonis Stonisfer. That's a hard name to say. Kai Campbell Stonecipher. There you go. Layla Delic. D E L I C. Yep. Maya Delic. Maya Delic. Is Maya here? How about Olivia Diaz? And Jace Johnson Perez. Skylar Jones. We can still clap for them. They did great work. They just couldn't be here. Um, Chloe Kidd. And Aaliyah Lee. Alina Marquez. Aileen Perez Lopez. Angelina Perez Patino. And Peyton Wathers. All right, thank you, Ironwood students. We'll go ahead and get your picture. Give them the Hey, batter, batter, batter. We only have all of this in one more page. <laughs> we're doing okay. We're good. No, we're doing good. No, we're doing good. Yeah. Just like a promotion, it's insane. Oh yeah, lots of names. Show the pictures, not the certificates. Exactly. That's, some of them yeah, don't have them. Show the pictures. The kids are probably proud of the certificates. All right, thanks guys. Congratulations. We appreciate your contribution. All right, next up is going to be Lakeview. So if you're a Lakeview student and Mr. Woodward is in the building because I saw him. Where are you, Mr. Tim Woodward? He's here. I know I saw him. All right, Miss Liz, Mrs. Lenz is here. There he is. And here comes the principal of Lakewood. We all love and adore. He's coming down the home. Middle aisle. We're going to start. I think it's Jacob Arguello Arias. Jacob? Well, did good work, Jacob. We're sorry you couldn't be here. Zedric Ariaga. There he is. From what school? I don't have any iron Sorry, we got sidetracked. Oh, I think we're on Shay, right? Uh, oh, Shay. Okay. Zed, did we do Zedric? We did Zedric. Shay Avila. Shay. <laughs> Zalia D. Bernardis. Zalia. Oh yeah, my bad. Sorry, Zalia. Congratulations. John D. Delisel. Delisel. There he is. Is he Johnny? Elena Dominguez. Good job. Abigail Howerton. Oh. Ian Howerton. Trish Wen. Serena Olney. Um. Nanaba Pearly. Esmeralda Rascon Chacon. Riley Symington. Lilith Wendy Shelton. And Rogue Wendy Shelton. All right. So this is all of our Lakeview artists. 
fish together and look happy. Smile. Oh, it's fine. Yeah, it's fine. We'll just deal with this for a few Thank you guys. Oh wait, family pictures, family. All right, next school up will be Solaro. So if you are a Solaro student, get ready. And Principal Ms. Crystal Bustamante is here, so we'll call her on up. And also the art teacher, Ms. Simmons, is here as well. Come on down, Solaro. All right. Yay. Yanish Badio Sotelo. Yanish. Okay, Preston Campbell. Euridia Cordoni Swens. Or Swens. There you are. Bennett Corey. Brisada Delago, oh that's wrong. Delgado, Venezuela. Brisada. <laughs> Emma Galvin. <laughs> Jezro Garcia. <laughs> no, I met him earlier. He's here. Did he come up? Oh, yeah. There he is. I met him. Okay. Jalen Gorodio. Good job. Noah Hawkins. Tylasia Howard. Luke Hyatt. There he is. Layla Llewellyn. Llewellyn. Navia Ramirez. Savannah Raymond. Melanie Salas Sanchez. Got a big crowd tonight. Did Melanie come up? Okay. Katie Wilson. And that concludes our Saguaro artists. Come on down. Get your certificates. We're going to scooch in. family pictures thanks you guys all right next up is going to be sunburst so if you are a sunburst student let's have you get on ready and is miss jennifer dial with us tonight Sunburst. Jordan Bo Bothan. Bothan. Jordan. Hey, I got it right. Uh, we have Olive Charles. <laughs> Sophia Cobian. Okay. Mia Gall. Alina Hall, Jordan Hopkins, Luke Messner, Sophia Ochoa, and I think that's the end of our Sunburst students. Awesome. Let's get pictures. Good job, artist.
Family shots. Thank you so much. Sunburst Thank you, Sunburst. And Miss Quintana, awesome art teacher there. Wait, wait, wait. Oh, oh, wait. Okay. All right. Next up, we have Sunset and Ms. Mandy Jones, principal. And Miss Douglas, I think, is here too. The art. There she is. Okay. We have our. Come on down. We've got everybody. Here we go. Come on down. Okay, so if you are a Sunset student, you can kind of be moving your way this way up here so it doesn't take as much time. Here we go. I'm sorry if I mispronounced your name. I'm going to try not to. Mimi? I don't think Mimi's here, but just in case. Oh, Mimi is here. Mimi, you sneaky, sneaky student. Okay. Araya Adair Lewis. Oh my, you guys are sneaky. They're showing up. Yasin? Also, Bailey? We even have our music teacher from Sun. Do you want to come up here too and say hi to everybody? Oh, okay, you're taking pictures. <laughs> well, you're just being up front. Okay, Kiara Boyd? <laughs> Milo Chavez? <laughs> Natalia Daw? <laughs> Adeline Escalante? Rylan Lopez, Abel Lyons, yep, Joey Mike, might have said that last night, Mia Moreno, Ushindi Mutahiri, apologize if I got it wrong, Liam Philby, Lexi Sands, Sonari Westbrook, and that concludes our Sunset students. Come get your certificate, sweetheart. Okay, so our small, you guys step, step forward, you guys step forward, and you guys go behind these two. Yep, you go forward, sweetie pie. Come on over here. Make sure you get in there. Yeah. That was Good to see you. All right, thank you, Sunset. Sweetwater students, let's have you get ready. And Ms. principal, Miss Susie Smith, is coming on up. And their art teacher, Miss Heiner, is and Miss Garcia. You guys are here. Come on down. The price is right. It's free. Okay. <laughs> I know. I think I'm. Don't give me a microphone. Okay. All right. It's a long list. Whew. Here we go. Cameron Antione. Avery Baez. Beza, sorry, my apologies. <laughs> Kylie Clymer. Clymer. Lana, Lana Glenn. Araya Gomez. Nathan N. There he is. Ariana P. Ariana, yeah, Pareda, Briella Pina, Anthony Rowe, Vader Vargas, Axel Aguilar Ledzma, Giovanni Gisa. Giovanni Herrera Rosales, Allison Hewitt, 
Juan Ibarra Alvarado. Okay, thank you. Mia Martinez. Oh, that's Giovanni Hare. Our hair. Yep. That concludes our Everybody Sweetwater come, students. Come <laughs> Thank you for coming and for being patient and waiting. All right. Our artist, are you ready? Yeah, one more. Yeah, we have one more. We have one more. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Thank you, Sweetwater students and staff, principal. All right, Tumbleweed, you guys have stuck with us. We're very proud of you. Give yourselves a round of applause. And we are going to go ahead and get started. And Ms. Kim Gessner, I don't know if she's here tonight. Okay, so this is Ms. Devanowski Underrender. She is our amazing art teacher at Tumbleweed. And we are so excited that she is with us. This is her second year at Tumbleweed. Here we go, Tumbleweed students, artists extraordinaire. Daniel Barron, come on down. Kendall Brown. Joseph Carlos Rios. Adley Crabtree. Crystal Gonzalez. Aria Gutierrez. Miguel Reyes Rodriguez. You can give them to him, yeah. Isabella Sevilla. And that concludes our list of tumbleweed artists that could join us. Yep, we're going to get our artwork and we're going to get pictures with your artwork. So let's find our. Yep, and scooch over that way a little bit. And while we're getting that last picture, has anybody's name not been called and you've been patiently waiting? No? All right, we did it. All right, thank you so much, family, staff, parents. We really appreciate you, students. You're awesome. Please have a safe trip home tonight.
Good evening, everyone. I'd like to welcome you to the Washington Elementary School District Governing Board meeting for Thursday, November 10th, 2022. Um, Ms. Tucker, if you could do roll call, please. Thank you. Governing Board members present, Governing Board President Ms. T. Lambert, Governing Board Vice President Ms. Nikki Whaley, Governing Board members Ms. Jenny abbott Bayardi, and Ms. Lindsay Peterson. Thank you. If we could have a moment in silence and, and please keep in your thoughts and prayers for everything that's going on in our country right now um, and around the world. Thank you. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Sorry about that. I had a child sit in my chair and all of a sudden the countertop was up to my chin. <laughs> all right, thank you. Um, if I could have a motion to adopt the November 10th uh, regular meeting agenda. So moved. Thank you. Is there a second? I second. Thank you. Um, all in favor, please say aye. 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 And if we could have, move on to the next one, um, approval of the October 27th regular meeting minutes. So moved. Thank you, Mrs. Abbott Bayardi. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Mrs. Peterson. All in favor, please say aye. 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 And it passes. Uh, current events and acknowledgments, governing board members. Yes, Mrs. Abbott Bayardi, go right ahead. <coughs> Thank you. Um, I just want to acknowledge all the wonderful people that are out here and also those that were here earlier for the art um, acknowledgments and celebrations, as well as the. Um, awesome job that the art teachers have done and the um, teachers and principals at the schools to support kids in that endeavor. Um, also, I had a wonderful time going to Mountain View for the pen pal um, pizza thing that I did with my pen pal over at Mountain View this week. And um, I'm trying to be a better pen pal, but she's still doing a much better job at it than I am. But um, I had a wonderful time. And thank you so much, um, teachers, for always going above and beyond for the kids and I hope you enjoy your day off tomorrow. Thank you, anyone else? Mrs. Peterson. Yeah, I just wanted to touch on two quick things. Number one, um, I wanted to say happy Veterans Day to our vet veterans and express my appreciation um, for their service. And I also wanted to, I was kind of struck, um, I know there were several ceremonies um, this morning at lots of our schools. Um, on my own campus, we had a little, a little thing that we do. Um, the football team dedicated their game tonight to the veterans on our campus and named all of them, which was just kind of cool. Um, and they also do like a little thing for community veterans. But I was struck by the role that our schools play in building that community and sharing that appreciation that we have for the people that you know serve our country. And not just Veterans Day, but for so many of those other holidays and cultural events, just, just how important it is that um, we recognize as a community um, that that's an important part of our schools as well. Um, you know, the maths and the ELA is important, but um, but we're building community and we're building a place that our kids are going to grow up and be a part of and um, make the world amazing. And so um, I was just really struck by that, the importance of those celebrations on our campuses. Um, so thank you for those that planned those and attended those and, and, and helped teach our kids um, how important Veterans Day is. Um, I also just want to express my appreciation to everybody that voted and everybody that went out and um, supported our community, supported our, our schools. I know things aren't over yet, um, but you know I know there was a ton of work to get those overrides um, and bonds passed, and um, our community has to support that as well. And, and, and I'm just proud to be a part of a community that does, it looks like, <laughs> um, and that um, you know that that we want to build that together so thank you thank you mrs whaley thank you um yeah there's just so much going on and um, it, it, we are all working really hard and i'm not going to steal the thunder because i think it might be in um dr stanton's thing but uh across the board we are seeing growth um and there are places where we are still working 
um, and still growing, but we had some great letter grades and I know letter grades aren't the end all and be all, um, but I can tell you from my experience through with the work that I've done and dialogue and watching that those assess the, the way that those grades are determined have changed significantly over the years with feedback from educators. So it, it's not just simply test scores, they do really take into account growth and opportunities and things like that. So um, I know our schools have been working really hard to move that needle and I appreciate that. Um, I also appreciate the, the Pencil Pal. I was happy that they did two days because I missed Tuesday, was able to go today. Dr. Stanton, uh, Dr. Bailey, Miss Morrow were there as well. Um, and that's always really nice. They did write letters to the, the veterans. Um, but the thing that struck me with my student is how um, easily you, would, you some of these students will talk to adult that shows interest. I think I just kind of sat down and talked to her a little bit, thanked her for the, her letters and her penmanship, which is better than mine. And, um, and just asking her what's your favorite who do you live with like what do you like to do at home and she just very simply said you know like oh my family is upset right now because we have a mean landlord and like we had to leave our apartment and um but now we have another one and so now i'm happy and just the reality that our kids are going through those things um how the rent issues and things like that are impacting our kids and how our kids i mean she's a third grader but they know what's going on and so um, just opening up and listening to our kids just a little bit. They they will really will share their world with you. Um, also want to echo all the work folks have been doing to get out the vote and um, know what the bonds are all about and the education and just everybody that took the time to support um, education and education candidates. I really appreciate the work. I know it's not done, but um, I definitely was proud of our communities and how much um, activity I saw out there. Um, and then I too want to um, mention Veterans Day. I do have grandparents, uh, cousins, uncles, aunts, and basically every branch of the military. Um, and so I definitely want to take a moment to acknowledge our veterans, but I, I also want to specifically acknowledge some of our veterans who, um, despite serving their country, didn't always receive um, the support and kindness and respect that they deserved our Native American veterans, our Hispanic veterans, our black veterans, female veterans, our LGBTQ veterans. Um, and so I do want to take a knowledge to acknowledge that they continued to serve their country and still do continue to serve their country despite a country that doesn't always um, show up for them. So I, I really do respect our freedoms that we have. I'm, I'm lucky to live in a country where I can speak my voice, and I'm lucky to have those veterans that have done that for us. But I also want to take acknowledgement of the veterans, particularly that have given even when we don't give back. So thank you. Thank you. Um, I don't know if you were able to be here when we did our awards, but it was, uh, it was exciting to see everybody come out and celebrate their children's work. Uh, with art and with their um, the scores they had performed on ELA and math and reading that got a hundred on one of them um, it was it was just it's why we do this is to watch children succeed and grow um, and I like to appreciate everybody who got out to vote I know things are still unsettled I don't know when they'll get settled they haven't we still got a whole lot of votes uncounted um, but very appreciative of everybody that took the time to get out and vote um, for our bond and overrides and for all our political positions. I'm so appreciative of that. And Veterans Day, do we have any veterans in the audience? No? They're all home. They celebrated this morning. Um, <laughs> um, I would like to acknowledge uh, Mr. Adams, who unfortunately couldn't attend tonight. He is in a wedding back in New York. And but he is um, he's a veteran and we've appreciated everything that he does and continues to do in supporting the military in Arizona. So we're very fortunate to have him on the team. Dr. Stanton. Madam President, members of the board, members of the audience. Uh, again, as we always say, it is an extremely busy time. I was able to attend the refugee parent event over at Alta Vista and I want to thank 
um, all the staff there. Claudia, was t please let her know what a great program she put on. Lori, it was great. We worked with the Phoenix Fire Department. They were actually giving out vaccinations. Uh, plus, of course, we always look at food, clothing, and shelter to help our families out. Uh, I do also want to thank uh, Roadrunner. I was able to stop by their Love Our Schools. Not everybody can do it on the exact same day, and so uh, Courtney and Julie were able to do theirs. Lots of parents and staff and families working together on that, and they had great projects to work on. Uh, so we appreciate them. Again, thank you for our community for voting, and again, for everyone that helped out with that work. It's, it's amazing. I, too, would like to thank Sam Cheriker, Lori, again tonight. What a wonderful, again, the artwork. We want to make sure everybody feels, whether it's academic sports, arts, it's so important that our kids are recognized. So thank you so much for that. I was also able to attend the Arizona Latino Administrators Conference. Um, got a chance to start working. Uh, Juan Seah is the president this year. I actually worked with Juan before and really excited to see some of the things that they're going to be working on. And then as I mentioned, I, I see some of our administrators in the back there. Uh, I was able to, Cactus Wren, Desert View, Maryland, Saguaro, Chaparral, Lookout Mountain, um, for their incredibly dignified veterans celebrations. Um, thank you. I couldn't make all, there was eight of them going on this morning, but thank you so much for the, putting those together to honor our veterans. And then our pencil pal, oh, and um, Mr. Adams was able to make the Lookout Mountain early this morning too. Oh, so, great. Yeah, so you should know that. Uh, and then our pencil pal, Nikki, Lori, et cetera, it's, if anybody has a chance, it's so wonderful just to write to a youngster who shares, who talks about things, wants to know about you, wants to know who your favorite sports teams are, your favorite book, and all that type of stuff. But it's really nice to meet them face to face and then have a chance to, just as you said, Ms. Whaley, it was nice to connect with them. And then I'm very fortunate my father is able actually to actually help with the Pencil Pal, too. So we, it's an event we get to do together. Thank you. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> We're moving on to public participation. Ms. Tucker, is there anyone for public participation? Uh, yes, we have three, four, I'm sorry, four requests for public participation. Ms. Cannon, do you want to start with yourself or the, your children? Understood. Okay, so Madam President, if it's okay, we're going to call, she has filled out three, and we'll call them all at, at once. Um, <clears throat> Ms. Cannon um, from the Royal Palm attendance area would like to address, address the board regarding the principal at Royal Palm. Um, and then we have Cameron Cannon, um, also from Royal Palm. He would like to address the board regarding treatment at Royal Palm. And then we have Damani Canyon. He would like to, um, from Royal Palm as well, he would like to address the board regarding racism. Thank you. Um, if you could wait just a moment. Uh Mrs. Whaley, if you could read the admonition, please. Thank you. Um, the governing board welcomes the responsibly presented viewpoints of our students, our parents, community, and staff. Our intent is to maintain a professional atmosphere that promotes public participation and conduct the business in an orderly, efficient manner. Speakers should be given a maximum of speaking time of three minutes. If interpretation services are required, the speaker will get six minutes, including interpretation. Depending upon the quantity of speakers or length of the agenda, the board president may reduce this time. The board, through the superintendent, has established procedures for responding to questions and complaints. Board policy also requires that any grievances against board members, district employees, stu or students be submitted in writing to the board president or superintendent. It is the prerogative of the board president to limit or stop any speaker who disregards the process and public comments. Thank you. Go right ahead. Uh, good evening. I want to thank you guys for giving me the opportunity to speak today. My name is um, Shamonica Cannon. My address is 8519 North 17th Ave. I'm here to speak on um, the d racism and a different treatment that my children have experienced within the Washington Elementary School District. Um, time after time, uh, members of the board have seen me come here speak directly by myself. But today, um, after my son, you know, they're typically uh, tell me how they're feeling or the different treatment they're experiencing. I said, well, today is the day. Today is the day that you guys come with me and speak on your behalf because you have a voice as well. Um, it have been numerous times where the principal have done things to my children where I didn't like. I contact the superintendent office and I don't feel that it's actually being it's hurt. It's, oh, I'm sorry, uh, Ms. Cannon, I'm sorry you experienced this, but until you experience racism firsthand, you, can pot you can't possibly understand the way I feel. 
you can't possibly understand the way my children feel. My son had been suspended because of a uh, teacher giving him a soda, and he couldn't go up or down fast enough. Things of that, like I mean, different little petty things that's actually taking place. Um, getting suspended for nine days at a time because they know that I can't come to the government. I mean, I can't go to the superintendent office and actually speak upon it. You know, it's something that's got to be dealt with on the school level. At that point, I have sent Dr. Bailey numerous emails. I don't even speak to. Uh, Mr. Standing, because he he doesn't take my issues seriously. I have him, you know, sp my son right here, Cameron, has spoke with him in regards to the different things that he have experienced at the school, and he told him that he was being disrespectful and he had to speak to his accuser when I told him you don't have to speak to your accuser someone that's treating you fairly I'm badly you know you don't have to you don't have to say anything to them I'm your mom if something taking place you can contact me and I contact the school board in regards to it um, I mean last time I came I didn't speak much I just told you that I needed you guys to look into the um, the principal at that school my son right here Damani have recordings of her if I record a situation they try to uh, have my son reprimanded because he's making a recording but that's the only way that we can actually capture what's actually taking place within that school if he's being recorded or oh, well, you're you're going to be suspended nine days because you're uh, capturing the moment that he's being treated unfairly but if he's speaking upon how he's being unf treated unfairly, then there's nothing being done. But if I capture that moment, he's also being recommended, I mean, um, consequence for what he's, you know, experiencing. I have recordings of the principal who's actually telling kids that they're going to get suspended if parents just pop up because they're not feeling good. I have brought this to the attention of the school board as well, and nothing's taking place. That lady, I don't know what it is. My cat, my child even told me today on the way. He said, Mom, I really feel that she have a vendetta against me and my brother personally. So I'm going to pass the mic, and I don't want him to feel nervous. Damani, do not feel nervous. I'm your mom. I'm here standing with you. So whatever you need to say, like you speaking to me, you speak to this board in regards to how you're being treated. I feel that I have been getting a rash, but... The teacher, they tried to put the officers involved in the, in something that's not even all that. They they tried to um, what you call it? Put uh, put a whole bunch of stuff on my name. They, they even if I write a report about what what I did or what happened in the um, and in the thing, they all, they they do not even look into it. I I say thing word by word of what happened of what. Of everything that be going on and stuff, they do not even looking through it. They just be like, no, 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 and just switch the subject and just give me the punishment. I don't feel. I, I feel like I have the right to speak upon it, uh, how I feel about what they've been putting me through. I've used to been an A plus student all around, and now I'm just dropping my grades by high rate, high ratings. It hurt me that that my mom had to see me going through this, had to put her through this. She didn't even want me in the school, but I wanted to go there to check to see if I can do better for myself. When I did that, they tried to set me up with a whole bunch of things. They put me, they got me suspended multiple times. Like even at a point when it was like, I'm in school, I'm out of school, in and out, in and out. I couldn't do anything about it but just sit there, tell my mom, just finish my work and do what I need to do, and just move on through it. But I'm here to speak upon it. To sh um, show the how I feel and stuff, but yeah, got my little better. So, I'm here to speak upon how Stanton, when I was in office with him, he told he told me my mom told me to not listen to him, and he said to um to always talk to the people that's messing with me. And I don't like how I feel that he told me that when my mother told me not to talk to him. And plus, on the second day of school, she told the principal told me to mind my business. And after that, I ca I called my mom to come to the school, and then I talked to my mom about the other per person in the office. The lady in the office always mess with me when I'm in there, always yelling at me. And I don't feel like she need to do that to me when I'm in the office making my work done and um, doing my other things. And I feel like the teachers are racist in there too. 
because every time I do my work, they give me a low grade for it when I try my hardest. And other things I do is to progress with my grades, and then they always dropping, and I always be getting F for no reason. And I keep getting suspended because of weird things that I don't do. And I don't like that. I keep getting suspended for no reason, and um, going to school, keep getting suspended. And suspensions making my grades drop in every class. So I don't like how I feel to make my grades drop and not get A's no more. Um, I just want to say on the record, I'm proud of my children for um, speaking up. I'm trying not to cry in front of them because I'm really a tough cookie. You know, they have seen me cry, but not in this type of matter. Um, it's been over like three years I've been coming here speaking the same thing. I have video recordings, and I, I know they also capture recordings, too, of what's been actually taking place. I even had a staff member here where I had to go to a court where he told me he'll have me, uh, he'll stab me and have me arrested for me speaking up on the discrimination that my kids have experienced at R.E. Miller. Uh, R.E. Miller and Royal Palm are night and day. I got a, a daughter that's over there that's making a principal list, making Awesome grades. My son here, Damani, he used to make A's and B's, but now his grades are uh, plumbing them. How can you say that you are for children and you're suspending them 81 days out the school year? I think it's only like 200 some days in that school year, but 81 days of that, they're being suspended nine days at a time. But whenever I'm constantly coming to speak upon it, it's not my voice, their voice is not being heard. Um, typically, I'm the voice, but today, I want you guys to actually take a listen to what my children came here to say. It took a lot of guts for them to actually speak upon, you know, what's going on. I don't feel that they need to speak to their accuser if things is going on. One of the, the bad seeds have been removed, but uh, another, Miss Nally, whenever she has something to say against my children, she's the same one who told my kid when he was hit with, in a wet paper towel and called homeless by one of your staff members at R.A. Miller, she moved over to Royal uh, Palm. Okay. Dead. Thank you. We're, okay. We're, we're running out of time, but thank you and thank okay. you, boys, for coming. All right. Up and well, speaking. thank you, and I hope that you guys hear exactly my kids' voice and their tra problems that they're going through where they're in school. Thank you. We do have one more um, person who would like to address the board. It's Mr. Christian McAfee. He would like to address the board regarding substitution. Hello, board, superintendent. Um, so yeah, today was my first day subbing. Had a good time. Had some first graders. It was rough. I was like, wow, how do, how do they do this? You know what I mean? I said, they're like the first hour. I was like, ooh. We went to recess. I was asked the other teachers, like, how do you do this every day? <laughs> um, but, yeah, you know, I met some great kids today, so I wanted to share my experience with you all. Uh, so one name was Jacob. He was something else. He playing football all throughout the classroom. You know, I'm like, hey, slow down. Uh, you know, and he loves storytelling. So, um but I, I got a chance to share my books with them, like superintendents take the best selfies. And they really connected with the selfies part, um, keeping promises, overcoming fears. Um, so my goal is to, you know, get in as many kids' hands as possible. Hopefully y'all buy 100 or more from me. Um, and then I've also been looking at the social media, right? And I think you all do a great job of posting daily. Um, but like Jacob, I love storytelling too. So I just feel that could be better. <laughs> you know, because it's just one video away from explosion, right? So some of my videos have done like 500,000 views, right? So I would just like to help out in whatever way I can, get get my hands dirty in a good way, right? And uh, yeah, I'm excited to be here. Uh, it was it was just an amazing time. Um, you know, I'm just an advocate of education. I, I love it all the way around. I'm a lifelong learner um, because you know, the wrong story, you know, hurts us, right? Like, I don't know what's going on with the last people who stood up, but, um, you know, the wrong story can hurt the community and, 
and cause damage, right? Like my little cousin passed away, he got shot in Chicago um, like last week and it really hurt me because I spent a lot of time with him. Um, so that's the instance of it going wrong, right? We put all this energy into to kids and families, but you know, like my mom said, I, I really appreciate my mom because at one point she told me like, I am your gang, right? You better not ever join no gang, right? And I was like, so today I thank her for that, right? Because it's like, you know, Chicago is rough. So, you know, if if we're not telling the right story on social media, in the classrooms, everywhere, right, what will end up happening to these kids, we, we never know. So um, that's why I really want to connect with them in so many different ways, right, in the classroom, books, social media, because, you know, their attention span so short, right? And I seen that today, it was like hard to keep up with those first grades. It's like, whoa, you know what I mean? It's like, um, so I don't know, I might go up a, a few levels, right? Cause I'm like, you know, I don't know if I can handle it to be honest, but <laughs> but that story, you know, is so important um, that we connect with them in the community and I just want to help out wherever I can. So I'm excited, you know, I had a lot of teachers helping me out. They was like, do this, do that, right? And I was like, oh, I need some help. So <laughs> we all need help. So, yeah. So that's my time. Hopefully we can connect more. Thank you. Ms. Tucker, is, was that it? Yes, that is. Thank you. All right, we're gonna go ahead and move on to the approval of the consent agenda. Is there any um, items that board members would like to pull? Not hearing of any. If I can have a motion to accept um, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and H. I move to approve consent items A through H. I second. Thank you. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? And they pass. Um, I'd like to take just a moment to um, two things on the consent agenda that I'd like to bring notice to is the public gift and donations um, from Cognacy Global, Night Swift Transportation, Leon Konoski, Musical Instruments Museum, Panda Express Community Programs, The Well Church. Um, thank you for all that you do in supporting our students and our schools. And also just um, to make a point of thanking the North Phoenix Kiwanis Foundation um, for their donation that support our after schools program. We couldn't do it without our community. Thank you so much. Um, so we will move on to now uh, information and discussion. Uh, Dr. Stanton, we're going on A for the 2021-22 labels. Madam President, members of the board, Dr. Jeeva Noen will come up and present our 21-22 A through F label presentation. Carrie. Thank you, Madam, Madam President, uh, Vice President Whaley, board members, Dr. Stanton, district leadership. It's my privilege today to present and talk with you about the A through F letter grade. So we are the um, uh, major component is student growth, which is 50% of the model. And that includes, um, that's a measure of AASA, how our students are growing on that test. 30% of the model is student proficiency, and that's a combination of AASA and MSAA with our students with special needs. 10% uh, of the model is uh, on Azela, which is an assessment of proficiency for our English language learners, their growth and proficiency. And then the last 10% is a potpourri of information that has to do with acceleration and college readiness. We've had some changes to the model this past year from 2019. That's the last time we received a model, and so or a letter grade, excuse me. And so the first change I wanted to bring to your attention was that that 50% that's the uh, growth portion is made up of student growth percentiles in its entirety this year. Um, typically, it's targets and percentiles, um, but because there's a new assessment for three years of data to 
calculate a target, so they withheld targets for all grades this year. Next year, 2023 letter grades will include targets and growth percentiles. Mm. And just uh, so everyone understands the difference and what they do, student growth percentiles, as I'm sure you're um, familiar with with our STAR, it's our students compared to their academic peers. In A through F, it's their academic peers across the state. For STAR, it's across the nation. Uh, the, while the growth percentiles tell us how our students, the growth rate of our students compared to their peers, it doesn't tell us how uh, close they're getting to reaching proficiency. And that's what our target does. So the target tells us where the student needs to score on AASA this year, the following year, and the second year after that, so that they can score proficient within three years. We get points for that for every student who meets that target or surpasses it. So in the upcoming year, that'll be added. This year, it's just our student growth tar uh, percentiles, excuse me. The other change was that uh, the state board removed the end of course math test, which is a measure of algebra one, geometry, and algebra two, and they replaced it with a more inclusive measure of increase in highly proficient grade eight students on math and decrease of minimally proficient grade eight students on math. The third change, uh, big change this year was our new science test. We just spoke about that a few weeks ago. It's measured the same way, but we do have a new science test based on new standards. This uh, nine A's, 17 B's, six C's, zero F, D's, zero F's. 13 of our schools improved a letter grade. Two of our schools improved two letter grades. Nine schools had double digit increases in their overall score. One school, the highest increase was 29.07 in an increase. All WESD schools increased in growth scores and nine of them maxed out on their 50 possible points. This slide shows the years that we were offered A through F letter grades. So they started in 2011 up to um, this year. Now, and there are a few years that we did not receive letter grades, such as last year. This is a, um, a sh this shows all of the schools that received A letter grades and they're alphabetized by the year. And as you can see, Abraham Lincoln has consistently received an A since A through F became um, our state model. Acacia consistently received an A uh, with the exception of one year and they were very close to receiving it that year as well. Lookout Mountain received uh, an A five out of the eight years um, that um, these AThref letter grades were, were uh, uh, calculated. Ironwood, this is their second year for an A. Tumbleweed, this is their second year for an A and then we have a bunch that have been um, <coughs> added this year. These Abraham Lincoln Acacia and Lookout Mountain have consistently been top leaders in the um, number of scale score, or I'm sorry, the total points for your A through F. So uh, they've rotated. Abraham Lincoln was high scorer, three out of the eight. Acacia, three out of the eight. And Lookout Mountain, two out of the eight. The reason why I uh, bring this up is that A through F letter grades is not, to receive an A, is not easy for any school, regardless of your student makeup. So uh, there is a misperception that if you have high performers, it's easier to, um, to show that. And in, with the A3F letter grade model, half of the model is about growth. And uh, with high performing students, it's often difficult for them to show growth. And the reason is, is that you can cap off in AASA. You can get 100%, like we've been celebrating our students. We want them to do that. When they do that, though, they're, um, it's harder for them to show uh, growth compared to their academic peers. They are being compared to other high-performing students. So for every student, uh, it's, it's a difficult and task, and for every school, it's an achievement and challenging. Also, m the majority of uh, letter grades are Bs, and so um, fewer schools receive As.
And uh, here is a slide with um, multiple inf bits of information on it, so I'm gonna take a moment just to explain. The table to the right has a list of our schools that are ranked by total points, and as you can see, Acacia is leading this year, and they broke into the 90% 90, 90 of uh, the A through F letter grade. The cap is at 100, and so they um, broke that, that glass ceiling, they're reaching it. Uh, 13 of our schools, as I mentioned, uh, improved letter grades, two of them, Orangewood and Chaparral, were the ones who went up two grades. Wow. And five of our schools are very close to receiving the next highest letter grade. The table on the bottom is the threshold for you, for your reference. So the talking points, uh, just a reminder, uh, a through F letter grades is just one indicator of uh, how we are making progress. It's the indicator that the ADE has for us, but there are multiple ways that we're making progress um, that may not show up in the data that we send to ADE. We have A9, uh, nine A's, 17 B's, six C's, 13 schools improved, two went up two letter grades, everyone improved in growth scores. And um, there are five schools that are on the cusp, that were on the cusp of reaching a higher grade. So uh, just gonna turn it over to two of our principals. Before I do, I just wanna miss their score in nearly 2019. They increased their overall score 20, 2019. They increased their overall score 29.0 points. They received a B, they were within two points of an A. Wow. Chaparral, they increased their score in nearly all A through F components from 2019. They increased their overall, overall score, 20.19 points, and they received an A this year. I'm gonna turn it over to the principals that make that happen. Would you like to go first? You may. <laughs> <laughs> By all means. Where it gets awkward. All right. Thank you, Governor Board, uh, President T. Lambert, uh, Vice President Ms. Whaley, um, Governing Board members, um, Dr. Stanton, Dr. Bailey. Thank you for having us here today. It's been a long day. It's been a long week. We are tired, and so we are going to try to articulate and encompass um, a lot that goes into. Um, a day at school, a year of uh, teaching and educating our most precious uh, uh, people, our kids. And so, um, first of all, I want to thank. Um, can I can I ask you to um, tell us what school you represent? I'm at Orangewood. And Sorry, your name. Heather Vasquez. And your Don't name. Don't you know me? <laughs> well, but all the people watching on yes, TV I'm, won't I'm know you. <laughs> and what is your name? Heather Vasquez, principal over at Orangewood. Thank you. <clears throat> and I'm sorry for my voice today. Um, so I, first of all, we can't do any of this without our educators. Um, they are the impact that uh, make the difference in the classroom and for our kids um, and our community and our family and uh, most of all, our students. And so as we um, kind of go down the journey of Orangewood, um, uh, the, the letter grade, as I tell my uh, staff, um, when we walk in, um, we were a D walking into um, a new school, my assistant principal, the fabulous Miss Emily Patterson. Mm -hmm. And um, we look at the community, and the community is an amazing community with amazing teachers and amazing kids. And we tell them that if we are going to take care of business, and business is going to take care of, our, uh, of itself and that um, if we're doing the right thing for kids, um, then everything else takes care of itself. And so we had a lot of work to do our first year. We uh, mainly worked on climate and culture and looking at stabilizing the learning environment. And stabilizing that learning environment meant that we're supporting kids, we're supporting teachers, and we're supporting our support staff making um, the learning environment and the educational environment viable for every student that walked in um, their um, classroom. And that took a lot of work. And it took a lot of collaboration and a lot of understanding, a lot of listening to what um, happened um, in the past that was great and where they were going forward and where we needed to move forward from there. 
And so we um, worked with our climate and culture team. Um, Ms. Patterson um, was an amazing facilitator of those conversations. Um, and we worked together as a leadership team, bringing people together to hear their stories. Um, we talked to our site councils, we talked to our um, students, we talked to our staff um, to find our starting point. And from there, we set behavioral expectations, um, common expectations. Um, we used a lot of the PBIS model, um, but we also um, were aware that um, the implementation of that was rough um, the previous years. And so we were very aware of um, the benefits of those pieces, and we went forward in a lot of ways with those pieces, and we made what we call the Orange Wood Way. Um, with our matrix, our behavioral expectations, um, our professional development around those pieces, and took, um, it took a lot of time and really made um, a huge impact. The other piece of that um, was training teachers um, and, and working with our, our support staff on what that looked like, what that sounded like, what those interactions were like. And that was a ton of modeling, a ton of visibility um, throughout the day. Um, we started um, with our recess times where we were out there uh, modeling those kind of expectations. Our eighth grade was particular hard, uh, hard that year. And by the end of the year, at the beginning of the year, they're like, hey, you know, go back where you came from. And at the end of the year, they're like, hey, where were you? We missed you. <laughs> and so developing those relationships um, cannot be um, cannot be minimized. It's very important. It was very important to us then. And then COVID hit and we didn't come back for um, for our last nine weeks. And we were devastated because we um, wanted to see that uh, year through. Um, and we had a lot of uh, reflecting to do on the year um, and we started up the, the next year and then we were in a, another difficult situation. But we had started that cultural um, shift and developing those relationships with our teachers and our teachers were in, um, in that process and we started a very difficult year, but we kept moving forward. And keeping moving forward, I call it the year of um, you know, grit. One of those pieces when we reflect back was the availability of technology. And so we look at, hey, what, what came out of that that we could grow with? And that was um, leveling the playing field with the availability of technology. And so when we came into Orangewood, we had a huge technology gap between um, what I had had at other schools. And so that huge um, gap was closed and our kids got access to those pieces. And guess how we test at the end of the year? Computer-based testing, right? Mm -hmm. And if you're not having a lot of access to those pieces, it becomes a barrier. And so through those pieces, we learned so much staff we were learners, we understood that we needed to close that gap for staff, for students, for parents, all of those pieces. And so as we closed that gap um, and, and came back onto campus, um, and we had two pieces now, we had um, carried our climate and culture and our Orangewood way through, and now we were viable with our um, technology and we uh, were moving forward in those ways. Also with those pieces, we were continuing looking at our curriculum, our assessment, our instruction. It would just look different and sound, sounded different. And then we hit last year and we got into, we're all back at school. We all are working our data cycles and looking at our data. And then that was the year of assessment, right? And you guys know that we started our STAR assessments and looking at growth and having a right now indicator of how my teaching is affected um, through assessment and how I can monitor those pieces. And we collaborated and you can't do that with, without the right staff. And so key pieces of those, of the staffing had to come through those pieces. Amazing coaches, amazing um, mentors. One of the things that I asked staff today, I said, give me some feedback on where you think our letter grade, why it went up. These are the things that I heard. Collaboration, support, social workers, 
right? And so mentorship. We developed a mentorship for our bridge teachers. We knew that they had support outside, but we needed daily support for them within it. So as we kind of learn and grew together, we're still learning and growing together. First year of assessment with STAR, we are learning how to pull those reports. What does it mean? How do I use it? How do I group? What resources do I use? And every week, we're bringing that to the table and we're talking about kids. We're talking about their growth. We're celebrating that growth. We're letting parents know that growth. And that process um, was important. It was very hard work and it continues to be very meaningful work. But I will tell you this, and this is what I told our, our staff as we kind of celebrated our letter grade, it never is about a letter grade to us. It's about kids, it's about learning, it's about growing, it is about making sure that we're doing everything that we can to have a comprehensive experience um, for our kids to learn and grow and achieve whatever their path will be. So I'm proud of my staff for the progress that they make, for what I see in the classroom and how I see them interact with kids. I'm proud of our letter grade, but that's not the end all be all for us as we, as we make this journey together. So I appreciate your time and listening to our story and I'll let you go. Okay. All right, thank you. Good evening, President Lambert, Vice President Whaley, members of the Governing Board, Dr. Stanton, Dr. Bailey, other WSD colleagues. I am Kara McDivitt, the proud principal at Chaparral Elementary, and it is an honor to be here tonight to celebrate our A-letter grade with all of you. We are thrilled that we have this recognition as we've been frozen at a C since the 2018-2019 school year, and we've been working diligently since that year to increase this grade, and we're finally able to have the recognition. I feel my staff has worked so hard to be able to uh, you know show everyone and show our community the last few years have been very difficult and you know the changes were happening by the minute as you guys all know those years were very hard and stressful on everyone um, one thing that remained consistent at chaparral is our commitment to the professional learning communities process I stood here last year with many of my staff as we were recognized as a PLC model school and our commitment to that process and our increased academic scores. And this A label is just another indicator that our commitment to that process is what drove our school to have so much student growth. A school that is a PLC is just basically when educators get together and continuously uh, work together to achieve better results for the students that they serve. Uh, it's the very essence of a learning community to be focused on student and be committed to the learning of each student. So some of the things that we did at Chaparral um, to have this success was to have grade levels collaborate and we started out by having them collaborate every Tuesday and Thursday and giving them uh, half of our PLC time on Wednesday. Uh, if you were to come to Chaparral today, the teams uh, find such value in that that they, they actually collaborate every single day. They, they don't miss a day without collaborating with one another. Whether or not my I'm there in the meeting or my instructional coach they just they really value that time when they're in these collaboration meetings they are breaking down the standards into small learning targets they're sequencing them in a logical order for students to understand they're researching strategies to best meet these learning targets and then they are planning lessons collaboratively so if I walk from classroom to classroom all the students are getting a guaranteed and viable curriculum that looks the same the teams also discuss success criteria, uh, and they create exit tickets or common formative assessments to, master, or to measure the mastery, and then look at what students need to know from there. Grade level teams set SMART goals in the classroom uh, using classroom data and other district data. They ensure that students are aware of where they're performing academically. Teachers work with our students in setting goals and identifying strategies and reaching this academic success. Both students and their teachers track their own growth. Our students track their data and present their data to their parents in student-led conferences so that parents know exactly how their child is performing academically and what goals they are focusing on. 
And we have an all hands on deck approach at Chaparral. We have a, a master schedule and most of our schools in the district do that have a 40 minute intervention block where uh, students go to get what they need. And all of our teachers, our math, our reading interventionists, our BSA, social workers, all of our special areas teams when they have open periods are a part of that intervention block and every kid's data is looked at and discussed and every kid is grouped into an area of need for them or an area of enrichment. We've spent a great time tightening up our PBIS Tier 1 system so that there's a calm and safe learning environment on our campus, free of distractions so that the focus can be on learning. And our students and our attendance clerk have worked diligently in increasing our student attendance so that students are in class the majority of the time in learning. All of these strategies contributed to our teachers building teacher efficacy, which is one of the major components to student success. Um, it empowers our teachers. They feel like they understand the curriculum. They know how to instruct and deliver that curriculum. And then when they assess the students, they know how to make decisions on where to go next. This led us to having 60 growth points this year, although you, as you saw, we capped out at 50, but we had almost 60 growth points this year. And we grew in every single one of our subcategories as well for all areas, our African-American students, Hispanic students, ELL, socioeconomic students, every, every, every one of our groups got all, all points possible. The collaborative process of PLCs will continue to meet the students where they're at and help them reach their fullest potential. Our work in this process is never done. That's why the definition of a professional learning community is working in reoccurring cycles. Uh, we have a strong system in place now to ensure that we continue to have the success for all students. Thank you. Just, just a moment, ladies. Just a moment. <laughs> We see at the. You don't get away that easy. What's <laughs> up today? <laughs> um, I just want to open it up to board members for comments or questions, and so they may have something for you. Board members? Congratulations. Um, this is wonderful. It's the first time I've been a part of the letter grade system um, as being relatively new to the school board. What I really love that both of you all talked about, and I know that um, all the principals um, probably really work on this, but uh, coming from the uh, corporate world, it, collaboration is always, I believe, one of the most important things because you get best practices from other people and you feel like you're part of a team and when you have that buy-in, um, you really are unstoppable. Um, so I really appreciate the way that you all, um, both of you talked about that and how important it was um, to um, start that with the climate and culture and then continue that um, and allow how you really make time for the teachers to have that time to collaborate and you encourage that and so forth. I also love the modeling. I think that's really important. Um, I think it's also important to tell them to get back here. No, I'm just kidding. To, um, <laughs> I, I love how you're able to kind of phrase that throughout the year <laughs> for the kids. Um, where were you? We missed you. Um, so anyway, I just really commend you all. I commend all of the people, um, all of the principals um, and the teams and the teachers this year for doing so well in light of how horrible the last couple of years have been. And it seems like this year should be back to normal, but there's no more normal this is the new normal, um, and uh, you all have just done a really great job. So congratulations to you all and to everyone else out there. Thank you. Any other one? Mrs. Whaley? Uh, yeah. Um, I don't really have any questions. Um, I just do want to make a couple comments, and I always love to add observations. So first of all, the two of you, I've been continuously impressed. I've visited Orangewood. Uh, I've been watching Chaparral for a few years now, um, before COVID, then during COVID, then after. Um, and so I want to highlight a couple of things that you both said, because I think there's some overlap there, um, and things that I see in some of our other A schools that I know are also happening. So the first one is such a focus on collaborative uh, working mentorship and professional development however that might be structured at your schools I've seen that as a consistent thing that I've heard about um, seen at, you demonstrate when at your school so uh, I just again maybe because I'm a trainer and I'm biased but sometimes we take away that piece because we get so busy but we really know how impactful that that is 
And so I applaud all the folks, all the principals that are prioritizing and really giving that time to educators, not only giving them the time, but letting them lead what it is they'll be learning and what it is that they need. And I heard both of you kind of say that they there was conversations about what do you all need to know or learn together. Um, I think the other thing that you mentioned was an expectation of efficacy. Um, with that comes um, consistency across the grade levels. So uh, efficacy meaning that um, with reliability you can continually feel like you can be successful in implementing a program and then that's reliable that you can get the similar results over and over again. Just efficacy is one of those words I think we threw around and not many people know. But it's the idea of being able to do something, do it consistently and continue to get that positive result. Um, and I think that that's really important because once you find what works and then you can drive the consistency so that all teachers are doing that, not just some teachers in the grade level or at certain grades, I think that's really important and key. And I don't know if all folks have the time or expertise in, in doing that. I do know that when I'm looking at some of these grades, the grades that saw a lot of growth also had pretty consistent leadership. And um, I think that's something that we need to note that some of these time, some of these schools don't have consistency in leadership and that's very difficult to establish something that you all have. Um, so I know you're standing up here, but I wanna give some kudos to some other groups because um, this growth is tremendous and I'm glad that we gave the opportunity for you, you all to speak, but I wanted to call out a few others that, um, because as you said, like once, and I think it was uh, Dr. Giovanni that said that once you get to that A level, you may not see that. And we didn't, many of our A's didn't have much more than a little bit of growth here and there. Some maybe even slid a little bit. No knocking on the A's, an A is an A, whether it's a 90 or 95, but um, I just really think that I saw some real big growth in the B group, so I wanted to, to give some shout outs to some of those, um, especially in our middle school. Middle school grades are very, very hard if you are in a K-8 or have a standalone middle school, um, very hard. So I wanna give a shout out to DF, Desert Foothills, 15.3% uh, increase from the last letter grade, Royal Palm, 14.9, Sunny Slope, 13.8, Arroyo, 11.16, uh, Moon Mountain 10.6 so these are ones that were consistently not only growing but that, that was a good chunk of growth in that middle space um, and uh, I also want to point out Palo Verde with a 6.6 .6, though it's still a C that is a good solid growth rate for that school I know that's a school that's had a lot of turnover so I, I do want to acknowledge that for them um, and then um, you know, just say that I hope that we can continue to do that. The last thing that I will say is I heard a lot about climate and culture and the use of data and being students are using that, teachers are using that, they're being empowered on how to use that effectively. Um, the focus on tier one. So you're not focusing on your most at needs kids necessarily or the most behavior problem kids, but you're really trying to say, let's not make it about, let's try to, to just fix these high maintenance kids. But if you create an environment, even those high maintenance kids will start to decline. And I hear that in this tier one and the attendance efforts. So um, I just wanted to, to, for the community to hear as somebody that does a lot of research and education and strategies that work specifically with uh, underrepresented students or students that have been typically low, uh, lower served and therefore lower growth rates. Um, those are things that research shows and then you have all demonstrated also uh, in your application that that is what works. So thank you. Thank you. Mrs. Peterson? Yeah, if I could just for a second. Um, so uh, I, I know uh, Dr. Givenon, I love when you're here, so I'm always excited to see you. Um, <laughs> the data, uh, letter grade days, it's my favorite day. Um, I, I, I know that you talked about how it's hard for any school to obtain an A, and I, I appreciate that, I, I, and I, I understand that. Um, but I think it's important to recognize that um, we we work in a Title I district with Title I schools. And um, I started to do it this afternoon, but I ran out of time, to separate the Title I schools from the non-Title I schools that received A's. Um, it's a little faster at the high school level, so I could do that quickly for my own school. <laughs> uh, I would love to see that data um, to understand uh, you know the work that our our teachers and our staff and our principals administration are doing um, with our kids who 
come to school with needs that their peers at non-Title I schools simply just don't come to school with. And so um, while I appreciate the hard work that goes into any school getting an A, um, I, wanna, I wanna acknowledge um, how much harder our, 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 our goals are to achieve and how amazing it is when we achieve them. So um, I would love to see that data, not that I wanna put things on your plate, just to, to see where we fall in those Title I rankings. Um, I also want to say I have had a front seat to Chaparral's um, success. My kids both attend Chaparral, well, two of them. Um, and uh, I, I, I appreciate the, you know, a great leader. My, my father taught me a long time ago that a great leader, whenever anything goes wrong, they point to themselves and say, it was my fault and I'm going to fix it and make it better. And whenever anything goes well, they point to the people that they work with with and for and say it's them. So I um, I hear what you're both saying and talking about your staff and how amazing they are and the hard work they put in, but they're doing that work because they're led by two very strong women who um, know how to lead and know how to assemble a staff. I mean, Mrs. McDivitt, I, teachers have told me that they have come to Chaparral to work for you. And um, I, I, I just am so appreciative of that work that you do and that, that, that heart that you build into your, into your communities. And, um, and this, is, this is what happens. It's good for kids, right? Like, it's good for letter grades, but you're right, Ms. Vasquez, it's good for kids. And so I just want to express my appreciation for your leadership um, and for the, the honor that you give to your teachers when you, when you see that happening. So thank you. My colleagues have said it all. Um, <laughs> you have, I think what you spoke eloquently to is the collaboration, is the team effort, is student focus. What, where are they now? What do they need when we want to get them somewhere? But it's also a partnership beyond just leadership and teachers. So are there any strategies that you involved that you used in in plan and developing your plan that had parents or students voices in it at all or was this just a, a main focus um, of the schools so when we were um, looking at our behavior matrix and our expectations it was important um, that we had our student body um, representation so our social worker uh, along with um, our assistant principal um, they made a focus group for kids to give input on certain components of those pieces and um, developed uh, some talking points with them and um, some really great feedback came out of that um, along with that um, at the same time was working with site council obviously on our CNA our comprehensive needs assessment that we do every year um, and the behavior matrix because it was so new we needed you know we needed to get that going um, to develop what those expectations were in the procedures routines all of those things around them so our site council at that time was very um, um, pivotal in working with us in those two areas I like that word pivotal mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, same. We had our, uh, we had a lot of parents from our site council and our PTA, and also uh, children and uh, a couple community members sit in when we did our CNA, which gives us our our focus for our goals for our 90-day plans and where we wanted to head. And then we also used our student council. Um, so that, uh, during our student council, we would go over some of our academic data, some of our next steps with them, and kind of get their input on it. Especially when we rolled out our student-led conferences to see, you know, how they would like to be able to present their goals and share those with their um, families. Uh, uh, it's, again, like a PTA and site council, they, we would always present our data there as well, and they would give, be able to give feedback other than just in the CNA. Uh, we have parents that sit on our PBIS committee as well. Um, they attend our monthly meetings and get to share in on that data and help uh, drive instructional decisions based on student behaviors. Thank you. Well, I just I appreciate your leadership in being able to help pick the direction of the, I was going to say focus, but uh, of where you're going and what you want to do and being able to create that culture of ever improving. People used to think that having an improvement plan was a negative, and it's not. We, we all strive to improve ourselves and, and do that as an organization to continually build. And our 
uh, population across the country is changing. Our student population is more mobile. We're very rare in being able to keep a student all the way from kindergarten to eighth grade. Um, I know the state says, well, if they've been here for a year, you should have just pulled a rabbit out of your hat and brought them right up. And that, that isn't possible because when they come into our school, they may not be at the same expectation level that they came from. So uh, there's that, that learning gap and being able to do that. The one thing I really appreciate about, and this is hard, Ms. Giovanni, you're going to understand this, that um, about state assessment is that I never felt that it was focused on the right thing. This, I feel, has a better focus of student growth because that's what it's about. It's not to judge teachers. It's not to judge schools. It's to actually help drive as our students becoming better informed and uh, better educated as they go through the system. And I just thank you for all that you have done. I thank all our principals for the leadership they have shown. It is obviously in Orangewood. I'm in a neighboring neighborhood, so I'm in the Royal Palm Richard E. Miller uh, neighborhood. But Orangewood has always been very close to my heart. And to be able to turn the culture around um, and once you got there and to be able to go from, from a D to a B, that is just fabulous or you're an A or you know you're a B sorry I saw the A I got lost I thought maybe maybe I said it wrong um, and to be so close that that really is kudos to your leadership and at Chaparral you're doing the same thing and I could say that about all our schools that we have seen and there's a lot of pride that I see in our staff in our leadership of um, the culture they're creating at their schools and building their own mini community I mean we're 45 square miles, 32 schools, but truly the community is as big as your school boundaries. And that is who you serve and that's your neighborhood. Um, and I just thank you for all your hard work and your pride that you take in what you're doing. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Mrs. Whaley would like to have I'm sorry, just one thing that uh, Ms. Peterson said that I just kind of want to add to as well. Um, I, I think that's an interesting point that you brought up around our schools being, I think all 31 of the 32 schools that we have um, are Title I schools. Title I schools just meaning that a percentage of over, how much is the minimum for a Title I school? Is it 30%? In 30% 30 in right. poverty to be a Title I school? 30% to be a Title But many of our schools are much, much higher than that. So I think that that's important to put, which means that students are from a lower socioeconomic status, but I think it's also important to note that all of these schools with A's are also still primarily BIPOC students. They still have a lot of special education students. Washington still remains to be one of uh, the higher levels, percentages of special education students, um, English language students. Um, so I do think that that context of the storytelling, as the gentleman said today about telling our stories, I think that is important. Um, and not only, I mean, yes, kudos to the staff and the teachers, um, but just kind of flipping that, it's, it's not just that they got our kids to do that. Our kids are capable of that. They always were, um, and our kids always can be. It's whether or not the adults in the system create an environment for which that to come through. It's not like oh, magically, like our kids had that potential. You didn't magically put something in them. Well, what you were able to do is create an environment that pulled it out. Um, and I think it's really important for us to remember that, that at the end of the day, all of these other things, it started with the belief that 100% every one of these students can do this. And that that was the expectation that every adult in that room believe it too, because if they don't, then they don't put the effort in that we saw happen in some of your schools. So I just wanted to make sure that we kind of reframe that it's not a magic sauce that, that, that our teachers are anything better. It's also about our kids are capable and people have to believe that that is the case. And what we have shown here today is that our kids, no exceptions of all of those other things are capable when we have leaders that put uh, put them first and, and center their abilities. So I just wanted to end with that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for coming and sharing your stories with us. Thank you. Good night. Thank you. All right. For our next item B, attendance matters. Dr. Stanton. Madam President, members of the board, I'll turn it over to Dr. Bailey to introduce the presentation. 
President Lambert, um, Vice President Whaley, members of the school board and, and our audience. Um, uh, our next agenda item is attendance matters and um, what we're going to do is actually get into one of the committees out of climate and culture. Um, as has been stated before, um, our climate and culture committee has actually um, uh, now has eight subcommittees and one of the major committees is attendance because we know the achievement that, that we're actually um, acknowledging tonight students have to be at school um, for achievement. So um, last year um, we actually presented um, st statistics to you um, that 88% of our students um, were in attendance, but we knew that um, we really need to um, really increase that. So um, the attendance committee really um, got together beginning in July and they have actually put together a whole um, uh, initiative and um, our um, school district has really embraced it. So um, Rich Morris is the facilitator for the attendance committee and he has members that are here with him and we want to um, actually acknowledge what has happened during the first quarter as we've really focused on attendance. Mr. Morris, thank you. Thank you Dr. Bailey. President Lambert, Vice President Whaley, Governing Board members, Dr. Stanton, Dr. Bailey, other colleagues, thank you for having me. I was uh, excited when I first got here today. There was a crowd full of people and I thought everybody was here to celebrate attendance until I found out it was <laughs> the art. So <laughs> it's wonderful art and I love to see the children's art, but uh, I was hoping it was about attendance. Um, our hashtag um, attendance Matters WSD, you've probably seen it following our social media um, as part of our initiative this year. Um, as I stated with the last time we all met, um, attendance team, we really focused on the, the district goals, um, making sure that uh, as a team um, we are focusing on creating a healthy environment and so we really wanted to make sure that we were supporting all of our diverse cultures around and that we were following up with all of our um, subgroups to ensure that they were uh, growing with attendance, um, raising that uh, attendance rate um, by uh, decreasing it uh, by 3% for chronic absenteeism, and then increasing communication with all of our stakeholders. So those were our, our three main goals. Um, last time we also stated we take a lot of resources from attendance works. Um, they produce a lot of things, and so I had shared with you some um, statistics with elementary schools on why attendance is important, why it's important at the middle school level. Um, within our district, this is our cut scores um, of how we determine um, if a student is in the tier one, tier two, or tier three level with attendance. Um, for a student that is low risk, they attend 95% or more of the school days. Um, they miss nine or fewer days of the school year and they um, miss less than one day per month. Um, we incorporate universal strategies amongst all of our schools to celebrate all kids who show up. And so th these celebrations are for everybody. Um, th those supports are for everyone. Um, at the tier two level, um, schools are monitoring students that attend 91 to 94% of the time. On average, they miss 10 to 17 days a year, and that's one to two days a month. So you can see just going from one day to two days per month can really you know, put you in a different target in terms of attendance. Um, for our tier three students, um, those chronically absent high risk students, they attend 90% or less of the school day, or uh, of the school year, excuse me. Um, they miss 18 or more days and they average more than two days per month. Um, and so they need intensive support, um, you know, because they face the greatest challenge. Oops, too many skips. Um, as I shared earlier in the year, this was our three-year comparison um, from 2019-20 to last school year with all of our schools. It's not necessarily, you know, it's more about the color, I think, showing that we went from a lot of our schools being, you know, at a tier one level or tier two, and then COVID hit. And then last year, you can see it was a very intense year for us with attendance where we averaged 88% um, attendance rate. This was last year's um, by quarter. And so you, as you can see, we had some promise at the end of the school year. Um, we started a turn around in that fourth quarter. We were having some schools um, come up to the tier two, tier one level. Um, I do wanna preface this by, you know, as a district, um, we were promoting attendance and you see some greens there that are in the 91 
to, to 93 there. So t technically, they're by the by the state level, they were tier, tier, tier two, but we were you know hyping up and pumping up uh, our schools. And so when I show you where we are right now, I don't want you to think we went from um, you know four or five uh, tier one schools to only having one. We actually are taking the actual numbers now, the 95% and above. So this is at you know very um, exactly what the state gets in terms of uh, for attendance. So Abraham Lincoln right now, as as the first quarter has ended, had an average of 95.54% attendance rate. So they are as a school a tier one, and then the rest of our schools are in the tier two level. Um, when you look at this is just another way of looking at it over the last you know five uh, six years, you can see that in the 17 18 school year. We were at a 93.8% attendance rate, and currently, as of November, um, this was we were at a 93.4. So we're almost back to the attendance rate that we were prior to um, COVID. Um, I like to point out that you know the attendance team, the 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 climate and culture group, we've been talking about attendance in terms of strategies and creating resources for our schools prior to COVID. We were looking at our 93 percent leading up to COVID saying that that wasn't enough. We were wanting to get to the 95% threshold. Um, and so we've, you know, during COVID it made it difficult, but we, we feel like we're finally getting on that path where we can put things into place. Um, this is the attendance rate, just another bar showing last school year at 88% as a district, where we are right now is at a 93.29% as a district. So quite a bit of growth there. It's an increase of over 5%. I really like this graph. Um, I think this is my favorite one out of all of them, this data points. <laughs> it shows, not a graph, these data points, excuse me. Uh, August, September, and October, you can see where we started in August, um, where we still had some schools starting out the school year that were intensive in terms of attendance. We met with, uh, our attendance team met with all the principals in July, and we um, talked with them about the resources that we've we have in terms of our intervention handbook. Um, we talked to them about creating, you know, within their administrative teams, how they're gonna look at data um, in terms of attendance and start talking through and sharing um, success stories that schools are having and what they're doing to get students to come. And so from that point, you can see the hard work that the schools have put in. Um, whereas in October, you can see all the green. We are having a lot of our schools are moving in that direction. So very exciting. Um, in the month of October, at a, as a district, we were at 94.7%. So almost to that uh, threshold. Within our, <coughs> excuse me, within our subgroups for ethnicity, um, you can see that um, for the most part, all of our ethnicity groups were pretty um, lumped together in terms of for last school year um, in that upper 80 percentile. Um, you can see as of where we are right now, um, every single ethnicity group has grown. It's an average increase of uh, almost five and a half, five and a quarter percent for, um, for all of our ethnicity groups. This report, this looks a little different than we've shared in the past. Um, we're not, we do not have, uh, we're not using Data Dash anymore to collect all of our data. We're using Edge Climber, and so this is a graph that uh, that they have. Um, what I like about it is it, it gives you some insights as well, which is the bottom wording down there. And so this is by day of the week, and so you can see our average attendance rate, 93 percent. Friday has the lowest rate at 92.1, and Thursday is our our highest rate. Um, of attendance at 93.44. Um, as an attendance team, you know, we talk a lot, a lot of factors. We write aloud a lot of hypotheses on, on why things, and so I think we're um, trying to get to some root causes. I think we have some ideas of what they are, but that's what we're doing as a team is, you know, seeing how we can increase the, the Monday and Fridays. Um, in terms of grade level, um, from kindergarten to eighth grade, we kind of have a little little curve there. Um, the average attendance rate again, then kindergarten, the lowest rate um, out of all of our grade levels, which is different from the trend we've had in the past. Typically our seventh and eighth grade have been the lowest over the last couple years, but as where we are right now, our kindergarten has the lowest at 91.6% and our highest rate is in fifth grade at 93.68. And I, I do want to point out with uh, the grade level as well, um, we d Mr. Mason and I did meet with, uh, as I let you know of one of our strategies that uh, we were going to perform is meet with the eighth grade students as a focus group. And uh, we did, we went to all schools that have uh, eighth grade students and we met with over 100, 
uh, 120 students and, and had average of around 15 or so students at each um, grade level. So I look forward to sharing you know, those progress with you as well because I thought we had some eighth graders love to share their opinions on why they do things. So it was, uh, it was very informative. Um, in terms of schools, these are the attendance rates of all of our 33 schools. Um, it also does include uh, our New Beginnings Academy. Um, has our average rate, uh, Washington Elementary School, uh, which also I think has one of the highest transit uh, rates ac across our district. Mm -hmm. They have the lowest attendance right now at 91.26. Um, it is red here from Educlimber, so don't confuse, that doesn't mean they're a tier three, they're still a tier two in terms of, uh, of our rankings. Um, and then, Online, uh, the Online uh, Learning Academy has highest rate as 100% um, currently right now. So just to share, last time I shared with all of you a copy of the Attendance Intervention Handbook. Um, so I just wanted to let you know the schools are using this handbook. They're talking about strategies and incorporating things um, so that we can put things into place um, to get kids at school, which is the most important. Um, we look at it as a tiered approach as I, as I have shared. Um, the next, what we'd like to do is share some examples from schools. So I, we invited some principals to come share what they've been doing in terms of uh, raising their attendance rate. And I do believe Sunny Slope is up first. So if I'd like to introduce uh, the principal there, Chance Whiteman. Thank you. Good evening, governing board members, Dr. Stanton, Dr. Bailey. Uh, thank you for inviting me to share some of the, thank you for inviting me to share some of the things that we're doing at Sunny Slope. Um, as you can see in uh, the graph from 2019, we were tied for the fifth best um, attendance. So attendance has been um, a strength at Sunny Slope uh, in the past, but like with every other school with COVID, um, it, went, um, it went down. And as you can see in the last graph that uh, Rich showed, we were um, about in the middle um, at about 93%. But, uh, one of the things that we wanted to do this year is um, incentivize and provide rationale about why coming to school is so important. So um, this slide just shared kindergarten through eighth grade students um, and also connect it to, you'll see one of the, the last slides is connected to PBIS and Kids at Hope. So PBIS, um, every student knows that at Sunny Slope you are safe, responsible, and respectful. So part of being responsible is coming to school every single day when you are able. Um, so one of the things that we do is um, we issue a gold coin. When um, a homeroom gets 40 gold coins, they earn a free recess. Um, so one of the things that we've done is that if a homeroom gets over 95% student attendance for the week, they earn a gold coin that gets them closer to their um, recess. Um, also, we highlight students on Kids at Hope Days, um, and also we want to, Maryland is, a, is an amazing example, and you'll hear from them later, we want to um, have the print shop create some banners to really advertise to parents as well what we uh, are doing. Um, and obviously, like, we use um, positivity, um, perfect attendance shout outs for homerooms, things like that. So this was our yearly attendance so far uh, this year, and I wanted to shout out our winners in the K-2 bands, especially to our sixth through eighth grade, Miss Vargas. She's been around for about 28, 29 years, and her um, classroom constantly has um, the best attendance. So of these classrooms that um, have earned these incentives, their average is just under what our goal is of 95%. Um, and the 95% goal is one of the things that we also set for teachers, too. I'm not sure of um, if we have a, a study that looks at teacher attendance for schools, but um, I would put our teacher attendance up with, with about any school. And these are the two, um, these are the two uh, Sunny Slope um, strategies or, or philosophies, ideologies, however you want to say, that we believe in. So we are a national model for the Kids at Hope philosophy. And one of the things that, that does, and, and Miss Whaley mentioned it earlier, that our kids have that ability, no exceptions. She said that, and I heard that. That is a huge Kids at Hope model, that it doesn't matter what neighborhood you're from, where you grew up, uh, where you were born, where your parents were born, um, you are capable of success, no exceptions. So um, one of the things that we tell our kids is being present for your present will help you be present for your future. I know that's a little bit confusing, but 80% um, of life is showing up and mm -hmm. being there and trying your best. 
Um, and and then we know that good things will happen when you when you show up. I mean, Heather Heather mentioned it. Like it's been a lot. This is the longest four day week ever. But guess what? We're here talking about attendance. We're showing up, right? That's what we tell our kids to do. And we model that and our teachers model that. Um, and then the second is um, about PBIS. So um, being responsible, as I mentioned. So we ask the teachers to do that too. So 171 out of 180 days. If they make that, they're over 10%, over the 95% mark, which we are um, trying for teachers and and students. So um, I think that we're off to a, a good start. We're about in the middle, but hopefully um, we will we will catch up and get back to you know top five in the district. And I do think when you look at that data, I think that's one of the reasons that Sunny Soap was able to grow academically too, as Miss Whaley mentioned. It's students and teachers being there, um, and I think that's one of the reasons that we have the fifth um, largest growth in in points for the A through F label as well. So I can answer any questions or questions for Chance, or do you want to wait? Let's wait till the end. We'll go that way. Next up, we have uh, Maryland School, and I have um, the pleasure. You'll have to talk to the principal Nick Gupton and the assistant principal Molly Boyer. And while they're walking up, uh, Mrs. Whaley, there's something on here, and you, you did it, and I did it too. Um, Maryland actually gained 10 points, but because it's an even, it's a 10 even carry. We probably need to fix this now. We need to add the decimal because it. You don't see it right away, but they grew 10 points too. So I wanted you to know you didn't get a chance to see it, but it's it, it's hard to see on there because it's 10 even. If we had 10.00, I bet you it would have jumped out. So just want to make sure people knew that as well. So thanks. Thank you, thank you. Uh, President Lampert, Vice President Whaley, distinguished board members, Dr. Stanton and Dr. Bailey and my esteemed colleagues and shout out to Shannon, one of my favorite people. <laughs> Call her every day. <laughs> That's not a lie, is it? <laughs> Um, thank you for coming to our school today and to our Veterans Assembly. That was really super nice. So anyway, thank you. My name is Nick Gubb, and I'm the proud principal of a 100% free and reduced lunch school, Title I school, and we are proud to become a B school this year, too. So I just want to say thank you to my staff who worked very, very hard on that. And um, this is my assistant principal, Molly Boyer. She's an incredible lady and very talented, and she's going to be a super principal someday. And thank you to Rich. He helps us a lot. He comes to a lot of our Wednesday meetings. And a lot of what we're talking about today is because of, it's a team effort, not just what me and Molly do, but our, our whole school. So we were asked to come to school to talk to you guys about some attendance matters. And we have a few slides. And I think you're pushing buttons, or am I pushing buttons? <laughs> And we're, we're kind of silly at this school, so we, we, we do a lot of things about climate and culture, and we spent the last couple of years doing things like that, and then focusing on always achievement for our students, how do you get to be a B school. And then in our one of our Wednesday meetings, we noticed that we a lot of our kids are not coming on time, and we had a lot of tardies. And we looked at the board Monday, I said, there's 80 kids late to school today. I said, that, that's not a good thing. So I said, we need to do something about that. So we sat around the room and we said, all right, we got, we got to focus on tardies. We're going to get these kids to school and get them on time. And then we had to come up with a name for it. We, we looked all like, what's a cool name? We want a lame name. So then Molly came with this great name. And I just found out that it was Tardy for the Party. And I'm like, gosh, she's a genius. This is so great. And then after two <laughs> years, we were talking about today, I found out, tell them where we really got the name. It's a Bravo show. <laughs> <laughs> So I'm probably like infringement of title rights or something like that. So, but I was like, this is such a cool thing. So we wanted to be tardy for the party. In other words, if you're late to school, you miss things. So we put fun things in place. Like we played music in the morning when the kids were coming to school and we'd out there, the teachers would dance with them and just did fun things. We wear these silly shirts. We have signs all over. We made it very clear, very focused. And then we put this big thing there. If you're late to school and it says you're reading this, you're tardy for the party, please park in the parent parking lot because it was just easy for mom and dad just to roll in and kind of just drop their kids off and go. We thought, well, let's talk to them. Let's find out why they're late and see if we can help and be of assistance. So we started doing that and lo and behold, we knew if we put time and effort in this thing, we would get probably 80, 90% of the people that would come on time. We knew 5% would be hard to turn and the other five might never turn, but we never give up on them. So we did this and this worked amazingly. And then because of this, then we worked next year, which is this year, attendance. And we had great things that happened with attendance. And we said, let's take this model and roll it into attendance matters. So that's kind of how this came about. It started with the tardy for the party. So we rolled out, as Chance mentioned, all these signs. And Molly came up with this great slogan, NBA, because kids like basketball. And we called it Never Be Absent. So we put these big banners outside of our school. We put all these fun things. And then you get this one little percentage thing. And you can see those 93 and 95 
are actually little Velcro things that the kids don't know that. We have a whole bunch of numbers and we can change the numbers. We set a little low because we wanted them to get success. We wanted them to achieve their goal and lo and behold, they did. And then we put these jokes up too because sometimes like you put all this like stuff up, you know, it seems overwhelming. So we put up some jokes too, just like, oh, that's some fun stuff. So read the signs. And we changed the jokes about every quarter. So that way the moms and dads try to read the signs. So that's, these are some of the things that you see. This is in our parent parking lot as you drive up with your students, trying to be very positive, but still get the message out that school's important. We need you here and we need you to be on time. And then Molly's gonna talk about the tiers. Yeah, so we use the, um, hi everyone, I'm Molly hi. Boyer. Nice <laughs> to meet you all. Uh, we do use the tiers of intervention to improve attendance. So we first knew that we had to have clear expectations with all our families. Our goal for every kid is have less than nine absences a year. So we know we needed to communicate that clearly. Meet the teacher night was a big night for us. We know if we get parents in front of us face to face, great opportunity to talk. Um, after that, we knew that we needed to set a school-wide goal as well as individual goals. So we go from the tier one to the tier two to tier three. And then from there, we place kids in these tiers based on their enrollment and their percentage that they've been in school. From there, we place them in there and we make interventions. So with that, you can see we frequently have data analysis meetings where we look at attendance data. So our leadership, solutions committee, whatever you want to call us, we meet by, we, we every week, but bi-weekly, we bring attendance data to the forefront. We identify if they're tier three, tier two, or tier one at that point, and or approaching where we don't want them to go. We actually pull their attendance label and or reach out. Say they miss eight days in a row, we call family, what's going on, they're sick, obviously they can't come to school. Maybe it's not an intervention, but an opportunity to build a relationship. And that is just as important as intervening. And many, many times we find out why they're, what's making them not come to school. Many times for our eighth graders, I don't have an alarm clock and mom works at home. My community buys them alarm clocks, we give them to them, they set them up for success. So this is a huge, huge piece behind the scenes that we have to do. And then you see all of our communication. We email, we call, we have parent meetings, we work with the truancy department, we collaborate with them, our social workers, we send out letters. Um, we have our teachers do data analysis with their students and with their parents. We have one-on-one -on -one student conversations. What will motivate you to come to school? We have those often with our older kids. We do newsletters, we put them on the banners, and we frequently do it on announcements. So this is really where I think the work comes in place but going the extra mile letting parents know we noticed your kids gone we want them here what can we do to support you so the real the heart of that like molly said is us tracking them and we divide them each have a couple of grade levels and we do track them very closely and send a lot of letters and things but for the kids part of it we want it to be fun and, and we want them we we brought it to the forefront we always want to talk about it and we always want the kids to hear the message so molly and i will do these weekly attendances and you can see we we have a party and what we do is we tell the kids there's all kinds of incentives you know if you come to school we have drawings and we give away prizes for all the kids who are coming to school and then we also do silly things because if you're coming in the morning and you're at school you get to just be silly on the morning announcement so there's some buy-in there too be on time come to school and you get to see all these fun things that we do um, this trophy here in the center is when every two weeks we highlight a class that has the highest attendance, actually two classes, and then we take them out for just 10 to 15 minutes and they get to go outside and celebrate and we talk to them about why they're here, what they did so well. Again, just keeping it, always talking about it, always rewarding the students, always keeping it moving forward and just small little things. And you can see here's just, we try to show you pictures of what we do because it's hard to explain. So here's just pictures of the kids going out and having a great time and being silly. And then we have dances over here on the stage with them and they earn the trophies and then in two weeks the trophies come back and then we redo it all over again and we pick different classes that win all the time uh, we have recognition assemblies this is really a fun thing that I did the high school Washington High School is wonderful for us they they bring their band their cheerleaders and they did big tunnel for all the kids and all the kids walk in and we celebrate attendance and academics and I always point out to the kids I say I'm gonna give out perfect attendance awards for the quarter and so I hand those out because I like to do it quarterly because sometimes if you miss one day, they give up and then they don't want to come to school. I already blew it. It's gone for the whole year. So we do it quarterly. And I tell them, you know, if you missed it this year, you got next quarter, you can do it. We bring them up and I put all these kids for perfect attendance. And then after perfect attendance, we do principals list and honors roll, which is the academics part of it. And I tell every student in here, watch this group of kids 
who all come to school and they're all here and how they're going to probably get a lot of rewards. So it's, again, it's a very visual thing for them to see all these kids. And all these kids who have perfect attendance awards are also getting principal's list and honor rolls awards. So again, just celebrating the attendance, emphasizing how important attendance is and doing it in a fun and, and meaningful way to the kids. Um, this district supports us. That's you? That's me. Sorry. <laughs> District, district support right there. Thank you. Pam would like you to keep going. <laughs> I keep going. Just give me a slide. Anyway. Thank you. Thank you. Next up, we have uh, the Director of Communications and Public Engagement, uh, Pam Horton, to talk about our um, communication campaign. Thank you, Mr. Morris. President Lambert, Vice President Whaley, Governing Board members, Dr. Stanton, Dr. Bailey. Administrators, guests, Shannon, I talk to you every day too. Give <laughs> you an update about our uh, attendance campaign, our attendance mat hashtag attendance matters WSD campaign. Um, when we came to you at the beginning of the year, we said we were going to put a campaign together and that we have done that. Uh, with resources for parents about attendance and why attendance is important. We, um, here's our website. And we also, uh, as Rich said, we are using Attendance Works for resources, and we use the uh, Peach Star flyers, or I'm sorry, their Attendance Works flyers, and we sent them home to families before school started so they could start learning about attendance, why attendance is important, and why it's important to get their children on a good routine um, for school. We also created um, some communication. It's a very technical term called a blurb that we <laughs> use for um, the schools to put in their school <laughs> newsletters. And then um, we also introduced the campaign in our biweekly WSD E News so that families were aware of our um, campaign. We also use social media a lot, and we made a commitment to um, share the importance of attendance um, on social media. We're trying to average at least once a week something about attendance. And um, you know, the beginning of the campaign was very educational, and now we're trying to get into the celebrations, the storytelling. And um, so we highlighted recently the success stories at Maryland, and I'm sure you'll be seeing more success stories as we go forward into the school year. We're also going to be working on refining our messaging a little bit for um, you know, second quarter, it gets a little harder to come to school, why it's important to come to school, and then we also have cold and flu RSV season. So of course, we know families are going to encounter illness, and please keep your kids home when they're sick. But um, really, if you're well, we really want to see you in school. Um, oh, and I wanted to show you some data on our social posts. We, we've been posting, um, like I said, averaging once a week. Our best post was the initial post about the campaign. That really did well on all of our platforms, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And um, in celebrations, um, in the first quarter, we talked about how great we did with our attendance. And we had almost 4,000 students district-wide with perfect attendance. And I love a good celebration. Recognition is part of what our department does. So I thought the next board meeting, we'd have them all come here and get their certificate. <laughs> No, we're going <laughs> to. Um, uh, I think that would be fun. No, as Nick mentioned, they do, the schools do a great job of recognizing their students, but we also wanted to, from the district level, show that we're really proud of them and their attendance and really want the parents to know. And so through um, our mass notification system, we did a message that's a general message, but we could personalize to the family. So it would be, you know, Dear uh, Rich Morris, your child Ethan received perfect attendance in the first quarter, and then those students all received the digital certificate. And we sent that this week, and I have to say it's been fun. Some of the parents are emailing us back, oh my gosh, thank you for letting me know, this is great. Um, thank you, Dr. Stanton, this is wonderful, we love it. And um, we sent the message in English and Spanish, and even coming back in Spanish, muchas gracias. You know, families are really proud of their children and the, and the progress that they've made this year. And so just some takeaways um, for this school year so far. Our data has increased so far. Um, letting you know again, you know, that attendance has a direct impact on our student achievement. And uh, we had such wonderful growth with our A through F with that. Again, a huge celebration, just under 4,000 students with 100%. And we're going to continue working as a district and at the school level to implement plan of action and strategies to improve those attendance rates. So thank you for the time. If you have any questions, we are Thank you. Here. Board members, any questions, comments? Mrs. Whaley. Um, as I've said before, I've, I've been a long fan of Attendance Works. I've uh, impl of Attendance Works. I've uh, implemented it at multiple campuses and helped with the tiered intervention and the data tracking. So um, it is amazing how much when you share that with kids, 
and you don't share it in a way of like, where were you? Why aren't you here? Or if you keep coming, we're going to send you this letter. Um, but you really kind of look at it through the eyes of beliefs and attitudes and then barriers and benefits. So beliefs is do, why is attendance important? You know, cause some folks like, oh, it's just a day. What can they possibly mean? So like tackling that beliefs around attendance and then attitudes around attendance, meaning like, well, it, they don't care if I'm there anyway. Like, so we're talking about just the parents' beliefs and then also the kids' attitudes about whether or not they're gonna be missed or mattered or anything like that. And then looking uh, deeper into the barriers and benefits. So sometimes it's barriers of anything from an alarm clock, as was mentioned, um, gas transportation um, to I don't feel safe or I've been bullied or I'm I am struggling academically don't want to be there those are all barriers and then um, benefits like why would I come to school what do I love about school I come because I know my my sports team's not gonna let me play if I don't play that or I come because I love reading time and I get to pick new books out um, and so when we start to look at that, we start to get a little bit of understanding of the motivation. And I think it's important to look at both the family and the student motivation. So I'm, I'm, I appreciate that I heard kind of through that, mm -hmm. that those conversations are hap happening. Um, and I know that there's a lot of great stuff on there, specifically on how to engage families. So I imagine you're gonna continue to use those tools and resources, spread them out, Pam, over time, instead <laughs> of just the first one. Um, and they have them for middle schools and, and younger grades and all of that. So it's really a fabulous resource. Um, so I'm glad that we are using that uh, and, and effectively doing that. I have a couple questions because it is so tied in. And I liked what uh, Mr. Gumpton said about, you know, look at how just showing up your likelihood of getting the other grades um, matters. Mm -hmm. uh, you're gonna get those other rewards, not only just like incentives, but other awards. So, um, one is um, what are we doing to better inform the students and families on their track record? I think I heard a little bit about like telling them they should come and but what are we doing to kind of give them that one-on-one um, -on -one kind of stuff um, t so that they see and not only just why they should come but they actually see those like red yellow greens for their particular student. Well, I know you know I'm gonna Sure, Maryland, you know, they, like uh, Mr. Gupton said, they split it up by grade level bands with kids. And so each member of their intervention team has a, a certain number of students and they're responsible for making those phone calls, having those one-on-one -on -one conversations. Um, it's truly building that relationship with them so that they know that they're looking out for them and that they're checking in on them and it's important that they're there. Mm -hmm. So I do have that one example. I would say that we know that that's a, a, a you know, in a very important strategy is uh, that one-on-one -on -one connection that the kids feel, you know, safe and welcomed at the school and that they have a relationship someone there. Um, I mean, I could get other strategies that other schools are doing just off the top of my head. I know Maryland does that a, a, in a strategic, systematic way. Yeah, um, and then I think that that's really important, the individual, like breaking it up. It's kind of, I've seen it done, uh, if the attendance works, and I've, mm -hmm. Hedy's even talked about it. It really is those individual things that work, and I'm just concerned, and I don't know to what extent that model is followed throughout the 32 schools because it's great if that's how one or two schools are doing it but we there's well, certain things with attendance works that we know should work at every campus and what's the expectation on implementing it, and what is the support for them to do that um you know i know with maryland they've had a, a an extra year because they were working you know their intervention team's not just about attendance it's about mm -hmm. uh you know students mental health their well-being academics behavior they have a very strong rti model so for them to just add the component of attendance i think was a smooth transition because it was past practice that they've had um, i think some of our schools um, you know and the, you know, talk about it on announcements this is normal things that has been done in the past so i do think them creating those teams and having the admin talk about it as a, as a leadership team is new. And so I think that, uh, you know, as you can see, it's working what we're doing, but I think over time as they, they learn and they see success, just as we know with anything, it, 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 it makes that motivation to keep doing more. And so I think as um, schools, you know, we share practices with each other and they see the success that Maryland's had, Sunny Slope and many other schools, um, 
you know, the hope is that they start sharing those practices and continue to grow those teams. Um, I think it's important, you know, in terms of, of my leadership style is I don't like to, to stack things on top of schools. You know, we have lots of other things going and so we try to weave, you know, things in so it's within their practices. And so we've been really talking about the MTSS system with Dr. Hannigan. And so I think we're trying to find ways that they can weave those practices in as they create those leadership teams and teacher teams that they're doing, finding ways um, then as a team to create that foundation of, of with skills. And so it's not necessarily us coming top down to say you have to do all of these things. It's really building it from a foundational level so that, that they have a true belief and they see those practices and it creates you know sustainable results. And it's not something that, you know, Mr. Gupton has the one that made us do this, and the second he's not there anymore, that those systems go away. We want something that's created that's yeah. sustainable. Yeah, and I don't think that's what I was saying. I think, again, we, are, we have 32 schools, mm -hmm. and I think there's a certain level of expectation about what is the plan that you're going to have to make touch points? What is the plan that you're going to have to yep. build in data review time of attendance and strategy? What is the plan you're going to have to actively outreach students and parents? So I'm not saying prescriptive, yep. but we do know that those are essential components of attendance sure. works. And and it sh certain, at a certain level shouldn't be optional. Yeah. So how can we coach you into um, tweaking or modifying what you currently have or building something so that you have an answer to that? It doesn't have to be our answer, but you yeah. have to have an, ounce, an answer to it. Mm -hmm. And that's how we see this just across the district instead of just you know here and there. Um, the other question that I had is how much are you it's also about data, but how much are you overlaying the behavior in the grades? So as you're looking at your tier ones, twos, and threes, how much are you cross-referencing your tier twos against some of those other indicators to see where the correlation is? 100%. So okay. that is within a different committee. Um, so within our climate and culture leadership team, we, uh, we will be we compare all data points for students and the starting point is behavior. But then from each student, and the nice thing about EduClimber is, is um, as a new system, when we see tier two students that you know are, are being determined as a tier two, if you click on that individual student, their dashboard comes up and it, 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 ha it prescribes you all the data points. So it has attendance, it has behavior, it has, um, any interventions that are done at the school level. It has grades, it has all the data points within one to kind of really give you a, a real whole whole child approach, you know, look at. So yes, we are absolutely doing that. Um, great, and then the last thing on the communication, Pam, I did get an, a little email and I thought that was great. I was like, oh look, Nina got a letter that she's here the whole time, which is really like, oh look, I got her there. Yeah. <laughs> So I actually am gonna print it out and put it on, put it on my desk. Yeah, put it on your desk. So you for getting her there. For the it's for the parent, yeah. <laughs> um, but it is true that, I mean, a lot of our kids are relying on their families to get them there. Um, and those come with other challenges. So I would be interested to know, um, and I heard, I think I heard people asking about the students and what kind of incentives they would like. But another big thing that when, when I was working with United Way and we did this is we did focus groups of the parents of the students that were frequently tardy and absent, not and we really focus that on a strength base of what is it that's your challenge um, and then what is it that we can provide them and at one school they for example gave gas card if your kids here a hundred percent then we will give you a twenty dollar gas card as the parent that's getting them here all the time like so I'm not saying that's what we have sure. to do but no, I, I think it's really important to also incentivize the parents because sometimes they are the ones that are really trying to get and there's you know, and especially when you have kids at two different schools. Right. I mean, you have one that starts at 725 and another one that starts at 9. That can become difficult. So um, just a little bit of a suggestion of I'd really love to see a positive interaction with parents in a conversation about the challenges and also the, the potential carrots that they would like to see um, as a primary as opposed to, and I love that we're doing this, as opposed to just waiting for that letter to go out that is to try to scare them into being arrested. Oh, so absolutely. I, I absolutely love this strategy a lot more. Thank you. And I wanted to just to, you talked about the, the barriers and the benefits through Attendance Works. And just so you're aware, our conversation with the eighth graders as our focus groups, we we developed all the questions based off of the barriers and the benefits from Attendance Works. So that is how we created those questions. So I'm very aware of that. So thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Ms. Peterson. Thank you, President Lambert. Um, 
Dr. Givenone and Principal Morris on the same day. It's a great, <laughs> it's a great board meeting. <laughs> um, <laughs> I had a, a question about um, the tier one, tier two, tier three numbers that we have, and I don't know if you if you have um, this information handy, but so I. I know, so 95% is attendance is our tier one. That's what yes. we expect to show success. Um, and then typically when I, I think of those percentages, so like 80 to 85% of our kids should fall in tier one, 10 to 15% should be in tier two, and then... Yeah. So are our numbers created with those percentages in mind, or are they created with our, like the tiers created with those percentages in mind, or are they created with those goals in mind? With, with those goals in mind. So we probably have a lot more kids in that tier two section than 15, 10 to 15%, or? I can't answer that. I'd have to look at it. Okay. I don't want to give you the wrong information, so let I, me, I will I, find that out. I would appreciate just knowing kind of where where our kids are and if our tiers are yep. appropriately yeah. measured. measured. So yeah, no. yeah, thank you. Um, and then can you go back, Shannon, to the slide where it had kind of the, the, um, the data, the attendance for the last several years? Um, did we take attendance? Um, uh, actually, go back. I think, well, where is it at? Let me find it. Um, no, it was, it would Forward, you mean? Forward. I'm this was last year by quarter. This one? 19, Well, I kind of wanted the one that had like many years. Oh, there was one. It was like, a, there this it is, one. right there. Yeah. The attendance trends. Thank yep. you. So um, did we take attendance in quarter four of 2020? Online. online on when we went online and it was like, if you show up for school, we're happy to see you. <laughs> we did. I it was just the packets, I remember. I and don't there know were Google we Meets that some yeah. of the teachers, my kids had some, so there was no attendance Buzz. taken. I don't think so. Yeah, okay. President Lambert, Governing Board, we did not take attendance that fourth quarter. <laughs> um, that was, if you'll recall, we were handing out packets, and so yes. we really did not have a system. I recall. For, they do recall. <laughs> I think we all recall that. Yes. I was writing <laughs> curriculum for four right. levels of yes. my kids. Yes. <laughs> it was so fun. <laughs> um, so, so I'm looking at those trends. So, and and you alluded to it, but I, I did want to just point it out. So it looks like we were trending downward yes. leading into the pandemic, which is why the the committee originally within our climate and culture team started looking at attendance because we were tracking that data. Yes, you were yeah. Right. yeah. Okay, so that kind of that ninety four point six maybe is a little misleading. With yes, yeah, it's Three not. Quarters. It doesn't include that fourth quarter, and so, so yeah, so definitely we were on a slow downward trend. Okay, good, I just, I wanted to understand that a little better. And then the last thing I wanted to um, do, Principal Whiteman and Principal Gupton for being here tonight and sharing the successes of your schools and what you're doing with your kids. Um, I think it's so important, and I think Ms. Whaley was alluding to this, how do we make sure that all 32 of our schools are, you know, working towards these goals, um, that there is a, a, a climate and culture piece. You know, there is a, my kids want to be at school. Mm -hmm. Um, and they feel welcome and they feel like they're missing out when they're not there and that's that's great um, My kids also got their perfect attendance. Well two out of the three. I do have a seventh <laughs> grader <laughs> or eighth grader I guess anyway um, <laughs> but uh, But my kids get themselves to school every morning um, I leave before and my little ones are up sometimes and um, and so they do get up and get to school in the morning and sometimes I'll be up and um, my daughter will I'll be like oh I'm running late which almost never happens if you know me um, it happens all the time <laughs> don't tell my principal um, but I'll be like oh, I'm running late and she's like am I running late I can't be late to school like she <laughs> I'm like no you don't have to leave for 45 minutes like <laughs> settle down sister um, but it matters to them that they're there so that climate and culture that's an important piece right but it isn't everything I also loved hearing about the very systematic and those processes um, that, that are happening at Maryland, that we're looking at those numbers, that we're diving in and finding out why are these kids here? Do they not have transportation? Can we help to solve those problems? It, neither one of them is gonna solve this problem. Neither one of them is gonna help alone. They have to work together. Kids have to wanna be there, um, and they have to be the one pushing their parents out the door sometimes. Um, but also, we then have to have systems in place. And so I just I appreciate looking at both of those pieces of that um, from our, our principals tonight. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. 
Mrs. Abbott Bay already <laughs> didn't know if my mic was on. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Madam President. Um, so if I could just go to, um, first of all, I, I want to celebrate looking at slide seven, not necessarily slide eight, I, and just how, am one? I going to, okay. I don't know where seven is. I don't see the numbers. Oh, it's right here. She has them. No, she's not doing it. Either. Oh, she's not doing it. Oh, okay. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm like, I don't see the numbers. I, I'm counting in my head. <laughs> if you could start from the beginning and just count down. Um, Which are? Okay. Wait a minute. Where are we again? Oh, I'm so sorry. I was like, oh, this will be easy. I'm right up. Back to, thank you. Okay. okay. Oh, what about that? And then one more. Okay, this. This is last year. Yes. Okay. And a lot of red. And a lot of red. Yes. And I love that now it's yellow. Yes. And one green. So congratulations thank you um and on all the efforts you're doing and then if you go up if you go let's see go up one more yeah, no down yep yep it's down okay on i'm sorry it's my it's my up yep, and you're, you're down. down yep okay We're and good. then go one more to here yes right nope keep going one more. Then, and one more. right there three month comparison yes once again yes congratulations you guys are doing a great job. The, school, the schools are doing a wonderful job. Right, yes. but I mean, it takes, you, you guys are doing, well, yes, they are doing a great job because really what this leads me to is I wanted to know what was on Mr. Gupton's head in <laughs> the picture, Mr. Gupton. What is that? In, I want The turkey know. from the bowling tournament, he said. That's a turkey? That's a, that's a turkey on your head? I don't know. I don't know. That's Looks like an saying. armadillo from here. Is it oh. turkey? <laughs> He got it at the bowling. Okay. Well, it's nice to see you on that. Um, but I do appreciate the hard work. The only reason I'm giving him a hard time is because I was that parent. Who, that's why they have that special gate at John Jacobs now to stop the I was that parent. <laughs> get out of the car. Um, parent. <laughs> get out of the car. Um, so I appreciate the hard work you're doing over there, Mr. Gupton. And also, um, uh, same with um, the thing that you have for the parents to go park somewhere else I think that's really great because again it goes to what my fellow board members were saying with regard to um, find out what's going on and also confront the parents yeah. I would be very embarrassed if somebody actually caught me running in like that um, but I appreciate the uh, the creativity and the um, way that you all are kind of thinking outside of the box um, your team especially mr. Mason I forgot how much I enjoy sitting you, you you're sitting there with your outfit on and your computer he's ready to do stats I just know he's going to the football game soon because that's what I see you see him doing all the time there at Thunderbird but um you you know you all are doing a great job and um what they're doing over at um at um, Sunny Slope as well with the gold coins and then the, the recesses, the thing, things like that that are really simple that don't cost anything. Um, and of course, pizza parties do, but it's it's great to just kind of incentivize kids because we're all incentivized to show up to work. Yeah. And we get a paycheck, you know, or, or we're put on those special improvement plans. And so um, I think uh, you all are to be, con you know, I celebrate you and congratulate you on your hard work and I look forward to future reports. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. I, I don't have a whole lot more to add. I, what I always felt as a parent and being involved in my schools is because we're a K-8, K-4 are really relied upon by their parents to get them there, either dropping them off, getting them to the bus. Um, so the blend that I'm hearing about of having it incentivized for the kids they got to be there because this is happening motivates uh, the parents to bring them um, having those conversations because we do have a lot of cultures within our district and a lot of them don't have the same urgency of the importance of education um, and so having those conversations and being able to explain why it's important that it's why they're there and what that's going to do to help their child in the future um, of what is going on. Um, so uh, there is just a lot of things that are going. This is great and in, in how it's being done. And I know that when you start a plan and you implement a plan, it takes about three years and to get everybody following in the same direction, to get everybody going. So I am not. Uh, my concerns, well actually I don't have any concerns. I see growth and progress 
and working together with parents and students and incentivizing everywhere around and that all our schools even if they're not doing the exact same thing the scores are very good or the percentages are very good of their students attending so what they're doing is working and I'm sure that will continue to grow so um, you know the fact that you're going to keep going with this and and sharing with principals and the leadership that it's going to it's going to continue to improve I was I guess I didn't realize uh, it, colors I'm so color oriented to see the colors of where things dropped off when kids were the attendance wasn't stellar um, that and to see the be able to see the improvement I know they're focused I know they're working on it I know that it's going along and kudos to all of them it's it's I don't have any I don't have any criticism or critique at all I think you guys are doing a good job you're on the right track we'll just keep focused and continue to grow so thank you for everything that you've done I appreciate Nick and Chance for coming and staying so late with us when I know they're tired and of course you do have a day off tomorrow um, <laughs> so they get I, to sl sleep in a little bit I just comment to that I just <laughs> I, I, I know you, you you made a comment about uh, you know different cultures and, and that thing I, I did want to point out that with our AE A through F scores we only we had one school that made the attendance points out of our entire district and it was Alta Vista and it has yes. our largest refugee population yes. and uh, and so whatever they're doing to make connections with that team with those with those refugees is really working and they're they they are seeing the importance of school and they're coming to school out of all of our schools that was the one That's school great. that got those points and, so I just and, wanted to point and that when out. I say culture I know that that word has gotten uh, single focused lately it, it can be family culture it, I, I'm just not talking about the subgroups I'm talking about just the family's culture of of its focus on education sure. that's always been the case so uh, there's no slight or any finger pointing or talking about the different I, I just wanted to celebrate them because I didn't point that well out I, I thank you for clarifying that because I we know. have to be careful with our language because unfortunately while it might not be your intent there are some folks that believe oh, well there's some cultures that just don't care about education or they just don't value education like we do and again not maybe not your intent but I need think we need to be very very careful when we we say things like that because as the data shows there wasn't a difference between our racial groups and our different cultures so we just have to be really careful about that because unfortunately that is a negative narrative and stereotype that is a very real thing we have to combat on our campuses that's that's very true the language has changed drastically and focus is different so uh, duly noted but I was talking about family culture so thank you. Um, but thank you you have done a great job and I appreciate the appreciate presentation it. thank you for the time thank you all right so. um, we'll go ahead and start with reports dr. Stanton Madam President, members of the board, member of the audience, uh, we'll start with administrative services. Dr. Bailey. I'm sorry, may I just real quickly? Sorry. I don't know my fellow board members. Um, would you like a break? I would like to at least use the restroom, but I also would maybe consider the reports. It's 9 o'clock, and yes, we are off, some of us, tomorrow, but... Um, and this is not on that's this would be a future agenda item but I would ask for this consideration uh, if we may want to um, motion to receive the this particular reports uh, via an email report I don't know if any other board members are interested in that or if they want to go through the dais So I would like to make a motion, seems how administrative team um, and those that are still with us at nine o'clock at night um, don't seem to object that we, um, instead of having verbal reports, that these reports be uploaded into the minutes and provided to the board. Is there a, a second? second? Ms. Abbott, already seconds. <laughs> Go ahead. Go ahead, Ms. Peterson. Okay, and I can uh, appreciate what you're saying, but I always, always feel that the reports are not only just for the board, it is for the audience in the district that is viewing and unfortunately sending it to us 
um, written wouldn't work, but maybe we could do something in tying them to uh, minutes or something, Ms. Tucker? Could that was the motion like to, to send it to us and add it to the minutes, and it was seconded. Yes. Thank you. Um, all right. So all in favor, please say aye. 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 And it passes. So we will go ahead and table these, and they will come out in the minutes uh, and sent to board members. So we're up to future reports and agenda items. Board members. No. Nope. No. Nope. Ms. Newley, do you have anything? Okay. So hearing none, then I will take a motion to adjourn. So moved. Thank you, Mrs. Abbott Bayardi. Is there a second? I'll second. Thank you, Mrs. Whaley. All in favor, please say aye. 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 And the meeting ends at 9.07. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, everybody, for staying.